All right, so that brings All the right. total. So how's everybody doing? Doing good. Not great, but happy to play. Okay. Well, hopefully we can turn not great into doing much better. Um, so uh, we're going to be down um, two players again. Same two from last week, again, due to outside circumstances, some personal, um, another one unexpected. Um, so um, as far as we know, everything's okay, um, and hopefully they'll be able to, be able to uh, join us next week. So... Um, Quite a lot of interesting stuff has happened uh, last session, and more interesting stuff may happen this session as well. So let me uh, go over the recap here, and then we'll discuss more of what you guys would like to do next. So just to get everybody back up um, up to date on the current events. So last session, uh, after getting your bearings from the recent events on your journey down the Starlight Trail, you finally arrive at the town of Frosthaven. Nestled at the foot of the giant spine mountains, the rutted track emerges from a wooded hillside and you catch glimpses of the town. Most of the town consists of about 40 or 50 simple log buildings. Most appear to be built on old field stone foundations most from older ruins, crumbling stolen walls covered in ivy and briars. The newer buildings are set on the sides of the cart track, uh, which widens into a, a muddy main street of sorts as it climbs uh, toward a little ruined manor house on a hillside to the west side of town. As your group approaches, the children playing in the town green, then uh, the townsfolk tending to their chores, running various errands at the shops, look up at your approach, but all return to their businesses as you go by. Faith, the tiefling warrior you rescued from the kobold cavern, seems to be much more at ease. Faith tells you that she's going to head to the local inn, the, the Hearthstone Inn, uh, to get some rest. While she does this, you and your fellows also took the opportunity to rest and explore Frosthaven for yourselves, in your own unique ways. Tyrion spent his time assisting at the local shrine, a, a shrine dedicated to the goddess of good fortune and adventurers, Timora. Spart also spent his time assisting at the local shrine. Um, he managed to earn a favor uh, from the clergy, but not before learning a dark secret about another clergy member and leaving the shrine in haste. Grinnelfurt was raised, but not without some lasting scars. He suffered a horrific injury to his face and mouth, uh, robbing him of his ability to speak. The priestess, uh, Abigail, requested that uh, Grenelfort and his fellows assist her in contacting a spirit for answers on the location of a lost spellbook. She agreed to go f forego any costs of a ritual if they were to complete this task for her. Meanwhile, Kavash begins forming a crime league of sorts and celebrates with his new crew with a little local crime spree starting off robbing the Frosthaven's Miners Exchange with some success. He uh, donates half his profits to the poor Frosthaven for his own reasons. Leah, on the other hand, decides to get a feel for the locals here, um, the community, and um, while doing so, she discovers that there's this mysterious figure known as the Masked Fighter, that participates in these legalized fighting contests. And, well, Leah earns plenty of coin betting on this mysterious stranger and donates half of her winnings uh, to helping the poor and destitute of Frosthaven. And on oh, the other no. hand... Actually, the, the, mass, the masked fighter does that. Oh, okay. Leah doesn't know what y'all are talking about. She ain't got no damn clue. <laughs> Well, uh, on the other well hand, said, sir. Inna spends her time carousing the uh, low class. Uh, in doing so, she does manage to uh, gain a contact uh, in uh, Trelina, a little halfling um, 
she is the wife of the proprietor of the Hearthstone Inn. Um, Inna, feeling very generous, donates one copper piece to the poor of Frosthaven. Now, after uh, these little events here, um, you begin delivering, um, you know, you, you return all the supplies and you find that some of the extra supplies that you've discovered from the caverns, you manage to re return those to their rightful owners. And in doing so, you learn of a local criminal element not run by Kavash, um, calling themselves the Crimson Mask Marauders. They extort the local businesses and terrorize the town in fear. They seem to stay away from the Frost Miners Exchange, though, as it is rumored the owner um, may be in league with the Shadow Sovereignty, a well-known faction that covets power, wealth, and influence, which they then use to kind of dominate Kelowna. So, not the best of news for anybody who would cross the Frost Miners Exchange. Now, your group um, does manage to discover uh, that the masks frequent a local watering hole called the Frisky Weasel. They encounter a few of the masked thugs outside of the tavern. Kavash, pretending to just be an ordinary boy, uh, catches the thugs by surprise when he attacks with a volley of darts. Everyone then begins rushing in and confronts these thugs, slaying them rather quickly in the uh, streets of Frosthaven. But before you can celebrate your victory, um, you begin to hear these terrifying sounds of agony rise from the shadows as this mass figure uh, emerges and floats towards Grinnelfurt, uh, handing him four gold coins as these gorilla-like beings with bolted-on masks and these rusted, jagged spikes protruding from their flesh begin to drag the dead bodies back into the shadows before vanishing. The sight terrifies both you and uh, the locals. You make your way into the Frisky Weasel and begin questioning the patrons um, to the location of the Crimson Mask's hideout. Grinnelford using his mind to speak with the patrons while using his facial scars to further intimidate answers uh, from the already terrified patrons you manage to obtain uh, the information that you seek, that um, some of them have seen the masks heading toward the abandoned villa on the west side of town. While preparing for the task up ahead, Inna runs into Faith, who is, seems to be frustrated um, as she exits the Burgomaster's office. Faith confesses to Inna that she did not come to Frosthaven looking for work. She is part of the Commonwealth Concordance, a faction that believes in action, fighting for your realm, uh, lord and homeland, so to ensure that uh, civiliza civilization can survive. She uh, came to Frosthaven looking for a missing member of the Concordant, uh, Ignaz Flame Shroud. The best she uncovered was he disappeared near the abandoned villa shortly after arriving in Frosthaven. After her discussion with Inna, um, she learns that Inna and her fellows intend to investigate the villa for the Crimson Masks, um, as well as some missing townsfolk that they may believe held prisoner there. Um, Faith um, agrees to accompany them on this task as it would help both of their interests. Entering the villa under the cover of night, you all make your way through the ruined cellars. Listening outside of a guarded room, you overhear talk about the prisoners being held there and the guards' distaste for keeping them there. Kicking in the door, Lee and the others lay waste to the guards, smashing them through the supply crates they used for furniture. Kavash discovers a secret door hiding more of the uh, villa's cellars. Um, various collapsed hallways lead uh, to an underground well where a floating worm with a singular green eye um, floats uh, past the well and begins to unleash necrotic energies that begin to rot uh, your flesh with its eerie gaze. 
The noise from the battle attracts a group of gnolls as well as some crimson masked marauders in the adjacent chambers. After a very tense, long battle, uh, Faith falls, almost being slain by a fleeing marauder, as Inna herself is saved from death by a healing potion uh, after the brutal punishment she received from uh, a few of the gnolls. Scouring the complex further, um, you and your fellows find a beaten and unconscious uh, winged kobold, which you take to an abandoned bedchamber. Um, searching this room, you discover some valuables, but Kosh, uh, Kavash uncovers a secret doorway leading to a set of stairs that seem to go downward. Grenelfurt, meanwhile, uh, takes some notes from a nearby forlorn laboratory and begins to comb over them in earnest. Meanwhile, the rest of you bar the door and begin to bandage your wounds, planning on what your next move might be um, in these abandoned cellars uh, in this old villa that seems to be the home of the Crimson Mass Marauders. And this is where we'll pick up today. Awesome. Gnarly recap as always, Dave. Digging it. Gotta keep everybody up the pace here. Okay, so we're starting with the short rest, is that right? Well, you haven't taken it yet. Um, I just really described you kind of patching up some of your wounds just as kind of a flavor of narrative, but um, you haven't started the short rest. Um, well, before we start the short rest, can I roll medicine on the kobold? Sure can. Uh, no skills. He's not uh, dead. He just fainted. Dave said. I want to talk about how wounded he was. So, like, that means like he's wounded real bad, like at zero. Um. Yeah. So. Basically, you're going over this this creature here, and you're not too familiar with um, kobold anatomy. You've only just seen them recently. Um, you never really had a chance to really study them uh, in depth. And you can see that there's been, you know, bruises and, you know, other blunt force trauma to this creature. But beyond that, you're not sure what else uh, maybe, uh, you know, may have uh, injured this creature. All right, um, I'm I'm fine with starting starting the short rest right now if we can. Okay. Um, can we can we make rolls to see how well we were able to shore these doors up? Um, you wouldn't really need to roll with that. Um, I believe Kavash said he was using a python to jam the door with that, um, basically yeah. effectively making it a uh, barricade. So, um, right. if something were to come by. Um, it would definitely buy you um, a few rounds as it tries to smash its way through the door. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we had done something there. Officially. Yes. That's called smarts. That's called old school. Oh, yeah. Jam the door with a piton, man. All right. Uh, then for, the, for her meditation, Leah is going to... Um, she's going into the, the back corner of the room because um, someone else already claimed under the bed Okay. and she's just going to kind of pull her cloak around herself even though she's not sleeping she's just meditating okay and uh, what is everybody else doing Kavash is uh, trying to uh, tame the baby Aspie fountain. I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> it's all good. Fixation. No, I, dude's just chilling under the bed uh, trying to observe both entrances in case he has to stab people in the feet. Um, Grenelfert would still be going over the notes. Um, he's going to end up pocketing the, uh, the Dwarven Tome and the note from the other spider. Okay. 
I realized I muted myself, and I was like, why is everyone interrupting every time I try to talk? That would be a good reason why. Y yeah, muting does do that. Before we start the short rest, Ina is going to pull out a healing potion and give it to Faith. All right, uh, roll the uh, potion effect. Uh, 2d4 plus 2? Yes. That's not bad at all. Okay. Just mark it on here. All right. Figure it helps if she's up before the short rest. That way she can recover hit die. Yeah, yeah, because she was, uh, you know, at zero. Okay, um, so since you're doing your um, short rest here, um, anybody who wants to roll your hit dice to heal, uh, you may do so. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm still pretty badly banged up myself. Because we leveled up, I can roll one. Hey... One's all I needed. That, that'll do. Nine, I used two hit die. I think I'll sit one point under cap. So oh, that, another hit die. That's, that'll work for me. I'm maxed out. She has to roll twos. That That is fan-freaking-tastic. Oh, my God. She has to roll twos? Well, I guess what she's doing. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll bring her up well, she gets that. to spin hit die, too, though. She's, she did a short rest also. Yeah, and I spent all her hit die. And um, when you ones? see it on the recap, two, two, yeah. No, but she's got a... She's got a ton of more hit points than we do, so yeah. She, but she's got um, different set of hit die because she's not um, she's not a player class. So yeah, but um, still, it doesn't help when um, she gets to roll a um, bunch of roller, you know, smaller dice, and they're all twos. So does she need the other potion <laughs> uh no we, that should be saved for standby right now we don't know who may need that potion right now this is why you know we just wants to run away and hide back in the inn <laughs> do we have the exact same we do we have the exact same party as last time yep it's amazing oh Oh, happy day. Someone please make sure we queue up Yaki Sacks. It's okay. Grinnellford has a... Uh, what are you talking about? To... We did great. Yes, yes, we did. Until the point where everybody... Actually, we did great because the enemy started failing rolls, too. <laughs> yeah, the dice were... The dice gods were very angry at everybody last session. Grinnellford can heal now. Which is good because Ina can't do her bubble anymore. No, I mean, this party of... Uh... The four of us did well. We used good tactics. So we can't really help that we rolled poop. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did fine. You should probably buy dice instead of poop. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Poop doesn't roll well. All right, so um, one thing that I promised that uh, you all would be doing here is um, you all are going to be deciding your own fates. So you'll be rolling for the random encounters. Nice. Yeah. I call shotgun. Oh boy. <laughs> so let's see. Oh wait, we we add constitution to the die rolls. Yeah. Yes. Which is actually something that I did actually... not do for 
save. That actually brings me up to max. Doesn't points. matter. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I, I forgot about it until I saw Kavash. I was like, right, I should have added one. Not that it mattered, but oh. I should have. Yeah, you just click your the hit dice. The it's like you've got a hyperlink underneath it, and it'll roll it for you with your con modifier added. Nice. So, uh, to decide your fate here, um, who wants to be the lucky person to roll a d20? Not it. Grenelford does it. I'm about to say I'll do it. Okay, well, uh, Grenelford, you called it first, so you're deciding the party's fate during this rest. Death. Death, Death is what happens. That's a good middle-of-the-road roll. I respect that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with it, too. I'm good with it, too. Well, at least we got the rest before the crap hit the fan, so that's good. Yeah, that's true. Plus, I have so, so many side points now. As you are bandaging up, um, you know, force feeding a healing potion down Faith's throat and, um, you know, just recovering overall. Grinnellford, while you're um, reading over those notes and finding some of those, uh, that little juicy tidbits here and there, you begin um, to feel something hit your head. It's like a small tap. And as it hits your head, it rolls in front of you onto the notes that you're looking at. And it's a gold coin. And then suddenly, nine more follow suit. Just ding, 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 ding. Um, and as you look up, you see this little figure um, upside down on the ceiling with clawed feet. It's like a little um, foot-sized man um red skin little horns um little bat like wings and it seems to have opened up some kind of a little coin purse and just dumped it over your head and it just kind of cackles like <laughs> and and after it does this it starts to just spin in the air and you see these little wisps of uh dark gray smoke as it um vanishes in the smell of just this pungent brimstone fills the air. Dave, could you never do that laugh again? That was like super creepy. <laughs> I think it was supposed to be. I, I vote Grunthal for it always rolls. Free gold from the sky, best random encounter ever. I think for it just looks at everyone and is like, I got another installment payment on probably the deaths <laughs> that I caused. <laughs> So that's ten gold coins. So we have. Do we have five people here or four people? Uh, four. four people. You're just trying to figure out which direction she wants to hide behind Faith. Five if we count Faith. I see no reason not to spread the misery. All right, fine. I'll give two of the gold coins to Faith. Everyone receives two gold coins. Because, again, if Grindelford is going to be cursed, he's bringing everyone with him. So he starts placing the gold coins over everybody's eyes, you know. <laughs> I now and have... You get two gold coins, and you get two gold coins, and you get two gold coins. Everybody gets two gold coins. It's that voice that echoes in everybody's head. I have it separated off in a special section. I'm going to wait till the first bandit tries to rob us. <laughs> <laughs> Call it karmic payback. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah. Um, other than the uh, visit from your little flying red friend there, um, nothing else unusual uh, seems to happen there. Um, you you know, there's occasional little drippings of you know water um, seeping through some of the rocks um, just from some of the snow and frost um just melting from you know uh outside just seeping through but outside of that you're not hearing um any footsteps uh rummaging through the hallways um by the door uh you're not seeing any movements with some of the uh, torches that were lit uh in the area Do, do we have to go in the creepy dungeon, guys? I think we're already we do. in the creepy dungeon. Now, Faith just kind of, you know, during the, the rest after, you know, being healed, she 
kind of her eyes flutter open and she's still hurt from you know all the the trauma the the slashes the um all the hits that she took and she looks around she's in a bed surrounded by everybody who's kind of half freaked out and she's got these two gold coins on her chest and she's just like what happened why am i on a bed i don't know i don't know what's happening anymore we drug everyone back into a side room so that we could rest and recover following the battle yeah i made you not die so um that happened And she just kind of looks at the, the gold coins and everybody's faces. and um, She's trying to see what's going on since she's been unconscious. Uh, she bandages it up. Oh, those so, coins are given to us by a death god. Well, oh. what we think is a death god. I think that was an imp. Close enough. Actually... Can I roll, like, Arcana on what this thing is, or religion? What, what we're uh, about? Arcana. There we go. Either an imp or a homunculus. One of the two. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, method. <laughs> it was Satan. <laughs> I've heard of these small, things. They are method. The small creatures from uh, the lower plains, um definitely a fiend of some sorts usually they cause a lot of mischief um they don't usually um aren't very aggressive normally um by themselves but in you know larger numbers they can be um quite something fierce they'll probably be fine as long as there aren't too many of them it was a messenger of the death gods I don't know if I'd go that far, though. Um, the, the the thing from earlier today might might actually be that. Well, um, in any case, let's continue on. Okay, I'll go deeper in. Am I, okay, about to say, am I the only one still on the title screen? No, we all were. Yeah, okay. I was too. Yeah, I was waiting for the uh, short rest results to uh, finish. Oh, Mr. Cobalt's still asleep. We have two options. We can either okay. go back and follow the and follow the one that escaped through the caves, or we can explore where this passageway leads to. Well, we haven't seen Ignis yet. I mean, we're sent here to find him. On Agreed. And we've covered, so far, the main floor of this place. I don't think heading out to the cave would be where they would keep him. They would keep him on the premises. So follow this passage, then? Yep, though that note worries me some. Many things worry me. What note are you uh, referring to? The uh, Ebon Spider one. Well, Reynoldford hasn't shared that with uh, you guys yet. Oh. That, that's, oh, that was for then. him, what he uh, discovered, and for the uh, recap. So, Reynoldford, do you tell them about what you found? Oh, yeah, that's right. The uh, the, the note. I, I even mentioned it earlier. Okay. Uh, do you want to read it to them? Reynoldford pulls it out of his pocket, and... Um, so I, so I found this thing. Lord Perlane Shroud. My spies in Scarjaw's trading post tell me that strangers are due to arrive in Frosthaven. They could be working for the Dragonborn. Capture them if you can. Kill them if you must. But do not allow them to upset our plans. See that any Dragonborn maps in their possession are delivered to me with haste. I am counting on you, Ignaz. Don't disappoint me and it has this little weird spider symbol below it 
But that doesn't make any sense. Not my note. Faith, you said he was part of the concordance, right? I'm not I... imagining that. And she's trying to process um, all this that's going on. Um, not sure what's going on, but we need to find whoever this Ebon Spider is. I don't like him. His name sounds too close to something I like. He <laughs> should probably this? die. You'd kill him and take his title. <laughs> no, the... It, out of character, uh, Kavash is the last of the Ebon Blades, so the guy Ebon Spider is too close to his name. It's like an insult. Do I recognize the symbol? Uh, no, you do not recognize the symbol. Do I recognize the symbol? None of you have seen that marking before. Oh, okay. It's somebody's so personal seal that you've never really seen before. It's like a little seal that would be on like a signet ring. So, what order are we taking the steps? Hmm. Uh, I'll go down first. Before we go, uh, poke, poke Mr. Kobold. Yeah, uh, he's already dead. Oh, he's um, just unconscious. Did you get my tell, Dave? Uh, let me see. Here. My whisper. Got to do it in in uh, in game. Oh. <laughs> like, uh, roll he's, a. He's, um, oh, well, roll a. <laughs> roll the <a> stealth check. <laughs> You're doing that right in front of Ina, who's at his side. <laughs> Well, it should be more no. at Faith's side because she was tending no, to Faith with the potion. The, no, during the short rest. Do it, roll a what? A stealth check. Okay. First, I want to see how well you can hide the action and then the actual act. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I think you got so, spotted by everyone. Yeah. No, y'all saw me paying undue attention to the cobalt. That's probably a good way to describe it. Yeah, the Kavach just has this really hyper focused, um, not a very happy look at the kobold as he's getting closer and closer to the kobold. What are you doing, Kavash? Can we make an insight check to 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 recognize his intentions? Sure. And Kavash, um, you can make a. Deception to see if you can kind of hide the initial intention. The intention. Yeah, it's. Oh no. His body he, language is. He's kind of murderous. Yeah, he don't like it. Speaking volumes, like he's got uh, mal intent for that creature. And is so oblivious Grint to it. So Grintelford reaches out a hand, and uh, it's toward Kavash. His. Uh, his mace is floating slightly as he threateningly flaunts uh, some of his sonic powers like, you will not kill a non-combatant. But Uncle Grenelfort, these creatures are evil and these ugly. These creatures are victims at this point. This one was being beaten by the others. We don't know what. Also, out of character, this is the one that has, like, wings, right? Yep. Yeah. This is not an ordinary kobold, and until we know what we are dealing with, to dispatch it would be premature. This one has not attacked us. Okay, fine. And then he totally ignores it, and his intent disappears, and he goes back to what he's doing. Wakey, wakey, Mr. Kobold. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> All right, so you start uh, waking up the uh, kobold. Okay, <clears throat> as you um, start jostling the, the kobold there, um, for a moment it, it, it seems like it tries to pretend that it's not awake yet, but uh, 
its deception on that was really low. So you kind of see it's like, you know, kind of slowly opens one eye and then sees you and closes the eye. And then when you just keep jostling it and, you know, wakey, wakey, eventually just kind of gives in and then moves with like a little startle, um, kind of backpedals by the, the wall a bit, um, looking at you all pretty terrified. If you stay calm, you will not be harmed. Hi, I'm Nina. I'm not a paladin. <laughs> Sorry, it felt like it fit the mood. It kind of did. All right, so... Come here. We're, we're your friends. Peace and calm. Uh, out of our way, in character, you actually, but these are the same creatures that we uh, fought at first. Those little reptilian bastards are mean. Well, yes, but clearly, see, they're not the only mean person in this room right now. The enemy you... of the enemy. Uh, who is else our is friend? mean? Kavash himself. Ian is not happy. We're going to have a talk when we get back to town, Kavash. So, even though it's still kind of panicked, um, it seems to be kind of sizing you all up, just kind of seeing what everybody's doing. and um, It eases a little bit, but it's still kind of... It's on guard, but it's not as terrified as it once was. Are you hurt? How badly are you hurt? Me hurt. You haven't hurt all over. Um, Grindelford reaches out his hand and, um, pokes the kobold on the snout and um, he'll uh, <laughs> he, he'll expend one side point and um, cast mend wounds so this um, little scaled uh, you know winged kobold here um, when you do that it um, just kind of looks at you all a little differently it, it's kind of tilting its head and you see it stretching its wings out and then it kind of flutters its wings just kind of waves them and tries to take up flight a little bit um as it uh just trying to see the the damage that was healed to it do you have a name swoop we name him meat oh me swoop. Hello, Is it because swoop? you swoop. Who you? I'm Ina. I am Grintleford Feppenshilk. I am Leah. Take a watch. It's just <laughs> silent. <laughs> and, and Faith, um, Oh, Faith, you're a strange little bugger, aren't you? I'm the guy who would have killed you if it weren't for all these other people. Thank you, murder hobo. <laughs> I'm not a murder <laughs> hobo. Kabash, we're, we're going to have a long talk when we get back. You're not human. They're, they're not even... They're not even demi-human. They're evil creatures that rob people and eat people and stuff. I don't have any use for them at all. They should be dead. The whole race should be dead. Do you eat people? Silence. <laughs> of um, course I don't. No, I, I, she, she's turning to uh, Swoops and asking him if he eats people. And, and Swoop just kind of looks at Kavash, um, 
and backs away. He ain't gonna slowly. admit to eating people now. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna sound like, you know, oh, yeah, sure, I eat people. Oh, it's gonna validate what Kavash is saying, and then he'll end up getting killed. So, of course, he's gonna say he doesn't. Yeah, and it, uh, you know, it replies, Me no eat people. Me get table scraps. How did you gain your wings? <laughs> swoop, swoop hatch with wings. Can we make a, some kind of check to know if that's a normal cobalt thing? Because I don't think it's a normal cobalt thing, but I don't know. Would it be nature? Uh, let me see for their type. It all varies by the, uh, the types. Um, for them, um, it's, it actually would be um, history on that. I have history. It's fine. Okay, I don't, I don't, I skipped that book because kobolds are boring. All right, so um, Ina and uh, Leah, you both can confirm that there are some types of kobolds that um, are naturally called birds. <laughs> are naturally born uh, with wings and the ability to uh, have flight. Um, it is not common, though. It is uh, very uncommon for this. I think Ooh. it's ten percent. Why were the others hurting you? The big stinkies are mean. What are big they... stinkies, little guy? And, big and... stinkies are mean. <laughs> what are they? And, and, like? and the the swoop starts trying to mimicking the the knolls and just their how they walk. And... Oh, those things! Yeah, they're even worse than you. They should die worse than you should. They, they laugh at Swoop, make Swoop clean beds and scrub floors and kick Swoop while Swoop clean. And they hit Swoop. They hit Ina too, and she hit back. They hit me as well. If you now promise, me. if you promise not to, not to betray us, we will take you to some place where they will not treat you as such. You want to come with us, little guy? Here's something out of my rations. I don't know what it is. Meat, beef, pork. People. People. I don't know. Tyrion's the one who deals with all the supplies. It's bad, though. I'm going to starve on this adventure. <laughs> so, Faith is kind of in a similar boat as Kavash on this thing, and that's mainly on stuff that she's read and her own um, very recent prior experiences with these things. Um, so, she doesn't really trust it so she's kind of keeping an eye on it as she's you know bandaging up um but she's not making any you know hostile actions threatening things with it she's just kind of eyeballing it um it still kind of like stays in its corner and um, when you try to give it food and it, it for a moment it just kind of hesitates looking at everybody like if it reaches out is it going to get hit upside the head and it just timidly just just very gingerly reaches its hand out and when it gets by the food it just quickly takes it and holds it back to its chest looking to see if there's any retaliation from that and then just kind of sniffs it like licks it and then starts starts chewing on it we cannot control what we're born as or even to an extent what our circumstances are 
but if you don't harm people, I'd be happy to to help you get you somewhere where you can be safe and happy. He's so cute. We need to keep him. I don't think that would be a good idea. Oh. However, bringing him somewhere where he has the opportunity to escape the violence and brutality here may do some good, though it may not. All creatures deserve to walk their own path, as the monks say. You're crazy. What are you talking about all creatures? Like gnolls, too? They walk their own path. And they need to die. If it is someone else's path to defeat them. I don't, I don't get you sometimes. You're talking about like evil should be allowed to flourish or something. The monks no. say all creatures walk their own path. Well, some paths are not as good as other paths. Well, that is just it. There's a whole lot of things and people in this world that deserve killing. That is just it. Those who fight evil walk the path where they fight evil. Those who wrought evil walk the path where they wrought evil. The only they thing still better have than the killing bad things is getting paid for it. They still have the opportunity to walk their path. I do not say which is good or bad, just that they walk it, nor will I allow myself nor others to be harmed. Like, uh, so what, y'all would choose the cobalt over me? That's that's really nice to know. Thanks. No one that. has said that, Kavash. If you were attacked, I would defend you. That is correct. He Fine. has not harmed us. It lives for now. Y'all have convinced me. Just remember, friend Kobold. I guess she's me, friend for now. That a journey of a thousand steps begins with but one. Yeah, he was just going to sit there and play with Kobold. Yeah, I was trying to email this to Kobold, but uh, wouldn't let me uh, take over the uh, token. He keeps trying to go to a Sahagan for some reason. Um, so it uh, right. so it, it just kind of looks at you know when you're trying to interact with it, and it doesn't know what you're trying to do. Um, so it's a very awkward, it's a very awkward game of patty cake. Um, yeah, I don't think she knows what she's trying to do. She, she spent too much of her life locked up in, uh, that tower. Swoop, um, have you been in this place for long? Mm. He, the swoop kind of looks up and three moons oh can't, what can you tell me about who is here and what, where where things are important things oh and the human with the brown hair have you seen him also, no, left, left hand. Let's see. I was comparing uh, my other notes here. See what this one. Okay, so 
Um, he, he nods when you ask about um, that individual. And he just kind of throws, Swoop throws um, their hand up in here, just kind of points around to the room. Hmm. Hmm. Out of character, though. Dave, the funny part when when Swoop looks at him and no one's looking, Kavash does the points at his eyes and then points at the creature. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I'm watching you, thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) So, um,. Let's see. Sorry, y'all. He's what? just very xenophobic. Um, what else do you ask, uh, Swoop? Maybe, maybe my mic cut out, but I didn't hear the answer to what I already asked him. Uh, repeat. Um, I asked him. Um, uh, what? what other people were here and um, if he's seen any important things that stood out um, so he kind of uh, swoop taps a little clawed finger um, kind of on the side of his uh, snout and makes like t- he takes his gun uh, well, Swoop takes its clawed hand and makes a little swiping uh, motion over the, the snout. Um, humans here red face they leave Swoop alone. The big stinkies, they're the ones that are the meanest to Swoop. Swoop not allowed in the other complex. Other complex? Isn't this the only place? And Swoop kind of shakes its head. Um, also, where's the crypt at? I've seen no crypt, but I know there is one here. Swoop show. Swoop not supposed to be there. Is it that way? And then she points down the uh, secret stairs. And Swoop shakes its head and points by the door where you came from. What's Hmm. down those secret stairs? Swoop just shrugs. I doubt they let him down there. Swoop not loud in this room. I say we go check down those stairs, see what's down them. And then once we have, then we can uh, go find the crypts. All right, is that the yeah, consensus? Going for nods. So, so yep. go which way first? Down the secret stairs? That seems to be what everybody wants to do here. Now, Faith is going to chime in. So, who's watching this little bugger then? Obviously, not me, because, you know, I'll probably kill him and y'all will be mad at me. So, here, you can come with with us. Here. Oh, I'm going to. I've got some rope and. We, we can tie it around and we can drag it like a leash. <gasps> that doesn't, uh, that doesn't sound. Sounds a little bit great. like slavery there. 
It's yeah, come on, you know. I'm not trying to enslave it. I just think it should be dead. That's more merciful. Well, if I have him on a rope, then he's not going to try to run. So he's a prisoner. Until we get out of here. Okay, prisoners are useful, I guess. Grimmelfort looks a little uncomfortable with that. But not enough that he'd say to stop. What's uh, Leah's take on all this? Leah, at this point in time, is on the fence. On one hand, the creature deserves the right to walk its own path, regardless of if that path ends for it or others in good or ill. On the other hand, it's a very dangerous creature, and thus not keeping an eye on it would be very, very stupid. So keeping it as a prisoner right now, as long as it is not being mistreated, especially as Inna said for now, makes sense and would not infringe upon it too greatly. All right. So um, I guess Inna then um, takes a bit of rope and um, goes over to the kobold that's just looking at everybody, um, talking about it, hearing people saying that it should just die. And um, you, So do you fasten it like a little leash on it, or what do you do exactly? Well, it, it, she's never done this before. She ties it around a hand. Uh, Kaval should be like, no, that's not how you do it. And over here, let me show you. Around the tail? No, you bind his hands, and then you make like a, a lead out of it. Watch. I don't think I don't think finding his hands would be smart in our situation. If a fight breaks out, I don't want it to be defenseless. I kind of agree on that. Well, I don't want it to be able to turn against us. It's the first sign it, or first chance it can. Then we will simply have to keep an eye upon it. I I don't think he will. Oh, okay. don't worry. Okay. He's a smart okay. cobalt. He's I'll not going to turn on us. I'll say this, Uncle Grandma, for for your benefit. Okay. If it tries to attack us, I'm gonna kill it. That's that's the end of that. Other than that, though, I won't touch the damn thing. Okay. If it attacks us, sure, it becomes a okay. combatant. But at this point, he is a victim. Oh, don't worry, Kavash. If he attacks us, uh, she points her hands at a uh, one of the nice drapery or whatnot around the room, and then. Um, Red banners. And now there's a giant scar in one of those. Let's with go. A very, with a very clear message. I'll go first. It's got to hit. Because so. he's our friend. Unlike that banner. Do you, do you remember what I rolled for stealth, Dave? Or are you going to roll me again? Uh, no, I'm going to roll. Uh, now, are you the only one that's stealthing uh, down this uh, stairway? As so. usual, when Grimmelfurt sees Kavash stealth, he will stealth as well. Yeah, likewise. I Ina can't really stealth at the moment. Well, it would be a group stuff so if uh, you wanted to, to Yeah, I'll need to, like, wait here for a second. Let me see what's down there first. To the non-sneaky people. If, if Grimmelfurt and, and uh, Leah want to go with them, he doesn't stop them. Leah and Grinnellfart are pretty sneaky, but Anna, you make a lot of noise in your armor, so... Well, and I also face. have a flying squawky squawk. Just wait here for a second. I'll come back. Alright, so Kavash, as you uh, make your way down these um, steps here, Let's see. Out of character, very careful not to expose mm -hmm. myself, man. Okay, now, there's no uh, light in these tunnels here. Like, no light whatsoever? It's completely dark. There's no torches, nothing. I have a hooded lantern. 
I, I can see in pitch black if I'll do the thing I did in the cobalt cave where I'll flash the lantern and uh, you know then close mm -hmm. it again okay so or actually technically doesn't it emit dim light in a five foot radius uh, even when it's hooded I think so not sure on the any of it's hooded here let me check that which would let him basically see barely enough to where he could see where it is going in his immediate square so let me see if they have that here Checking the uh, latest D and D Beyond here. I just think Ooh, I okay. think it is. I think it emits. Like lantern cast bright light in a thirty foot radius and a dim light for an additional thirty feet. Once lit, it burns for six hours on a flask. One pint of oil. As an action, you can lower the hood, reducing the light to a dim light in a five foot radius. So that's perfect. Okay. So you're just kind of inching along here with that yep. uh, little bit of dim light. Yeah, because the skulker lets him see normally in that little five foot area. And then if he needs to, he'll open it for greater illumination. So as you're going through these um, the tunnels here, these do not appear to be any part of the villa itself. This appears to be something that was either um sloppily carved out or maybe part of a natural um cavern formation um that the okay. villages happen to be nearby now as you're going through the tunnel here the walls are slick um and are actually kind of frosted over there's you do feel stops. very cold air as soon as the, he goes about 60 feet and there's nothing he'd go back and okay. tell everybody it's a smooth tunnel, it's kind of frosted, and there's not, nothing in there so far. I don't want to get too far ahead, though. Okay. Well, me and would go down there, so that way she can see around in the dark. Let's go down. So who's got the uh, kobold, and what's the marching order? Ian has got the kobold. Okay. Does anyone in the back need light to see? Gretelford has low light, so he needs some. Yeah, I think the only person who can see in pitch black is Ina. Um, technically, uh, Leah can. They, those with dark vision Faith see... Faith can, yeah. You see it black and white, and it counts yeah. as dim light. So the only yeah. person who needs light is Kavash. Pretty much. Wait, don't... Aren't you half elf with dark no. vision? No. Oh. No, no, he's he's, human. he's all human boy. Okay, well he can since he has five feet dim radius around himself, he could uh, just follow one of the other people. He'd stay close to in the. All right. In this case, then Leah will take the lead because she can see and is also very stealthy and nimble. And able to spot traps. All right. So, as you all start going down this tunnel here, you start to see the same things that Kavash uh, saw here. This um, tunnel is, seems to be actually some kind of a you know a natural cavern that you do feel very cool air through it. Um, the condensation, the the moisture seeping from the rocks, are actually being you know frosted over, making little thin uh, layers of ice along the rock surfaces not to the point where it's difficult terrain in here just to move around um, you're able to keep your footing but just something of note that's usually not something you'd see um, deep under you know ground uh, usually you'll see these kind of things when there's uh, an open access um, to uh, the outside at some point because the temperature of the, the rocks are always kind of regulated so that air that is actually coming in is cooling. And so there's a draft point somewhere. And following through this tunnel, um, it snakes uh, for, you know, you, you're traveling for a good 10 minutes. Um, 
taking your time going through here and you start to see um, that it starts to slope upwards and you start to hear the sounds of uh, crickets. Did we just get outside? You're still in the, the caverns. You just, Leah, you're, you're seeing where it's starting to slope upwards and you're hearing the mm-hmm. faint sounds of crickets. I think this might lead outside, but... Well, tally-ho. All right, continue on. All right, so as you uh, continue on, um, the slope is a natural uh, rock formation slope here. Um, looks like it was the rocks would have been moved to make a, um, a natural staircase. Not very... Not a lot of time was taken for it. It just served its purpose. And there are some leaves, bushes, um, little, you know, um, plants that are just covering um, the outside here. And you do feel the night breeze um, as you go up here. And as you make your way, um, you know, pushing past some of the, the leaves and vines here, you come out of a small little um, hill that's dotted with, you know, bits of uh, some of the forest uh, trees. Um, Looks like you're in an orchard. Um, And this cavern just seems to naturally lead from the orchard to the villa. Um, And as you come out here, you're not, you're still, you're, you're in Frosthaven, but you're on the uh, east side of Frosthaven. So this does lead us Tricky. indeed outside. Correct. If we want to continue searching, searching the structure, we'll have to go back. This looks like yep. a private entrance or exit for the wizard that obviously lives here. Hmm. Why would he run from us? It's called the bolt hole, by the way. Well, we don't know that he ran from us. We just know he's not here. Well, I would assume that they ran from something because the bed was still warm, so... That is correct. The place was recently um, left in haste. Is anyone here an expert tracker? Maybe it's a townsperson who we would recognize. That's why they left. Mm, no, it's For left. all we know, it could be the dang sheriff guy. Well, the kobold pointed out who lived in here. It's the man that me and Faith are trying to find. This does not bode well. Well then, let us head back in and check the other route. My question here is, do we release the kobold, or the gnoll? He's a wing. Uh, it's, it's a, a kobold. kobold. Winged kobold. It's oh, it's a kobold, okay. I thought it was a gnoll. Oh, no, it'd be dead no, if it was. A gnoll is a hyena-headed creature. The two that we fought earlier are called gnolls. And three. The kobold three is, gnolls. The kobold is like a little dragon head guy. Oh, yeah, no, I, I know the difference. I just thought... Um, no, it's a winged kobold called an Erd, is what it is. Gotcha. All do right, we Mr. release the Do we release the kobold now then? Oh, Mr. Swoops needs to take us to the crypts. I'm assuming it's back the other way where that other guy ran to before. So we have at least one enemy left. Agreed. Well, hopefully he was smart enough to realize what's going to happen to him if he stays in there. All right, so um, going back through the the little hidden passageway, um, you make your way back, traveling another 10 minutes uh, going through, uh, back to the bedchamber. The door is still barred shut. Uh, Nobody's tried to bash it in um, in the good 20 minutes or so that it took you guys to travel back and forth. Um, 
Kavash, you take your uh, python back from the door and uh, you unbar it. All right, I will peek through the keyhole outside the door and see if anyone is there or not. Okay. Same and uh, make a perception. You are not seeing any movement, anything beyond that door. Okay. Looks like just plain wall right across, uh, just like the way you came into it. Awesome. You would leave and then look down the hallway. Okay. Uh, looking uh, down the hallway there, you're not seeing anything there. Um, in fact, the bodies themselves that were once littered this hall are all gone. All that remains are some of the pools of blood uh, and the splatters on the walls from the combat. Wait a minute. You just said the bodies that littered the place are gone? They are gone. That's not a good thing, Dave. I think I know where they went. Zombies. Oh gosh, this place has zombies. That's not a good thing at all. But I think I know where they went. Lead on, then. Okay. Well, I mean, I think I know what took them. So, as you are going down the... Ah. Even the that floating one-eyed worm, even that's been taken. Wow. The floating, the, the bone being, that that gave us the coin. Uh, ask no. the cobalt guy. He's talking about this tunnel right here, isn't he? No, the, the cobalt, um, like, as you're dragging him, he's like, Ah! Ah! Well, this a way! Aim would, not be, aim would be going at his pace. And then what he's he, he's pointing back up this way. Come on. All right. Follow him. So um, he goes in here. And you see him, um, like, first he looks at you like, like, he needs, he's kind of like pointing like he needs to go over here. But he's asking permission to go over there because he doesn't want to get murdered by Kavash. Where, where does he need to go? Um, he's saying he needs to go, like, over here. Kavash just stares at him. Okay, you can he go over there. Weapons. Okay, and now to... Leah has her staff at the ready. Kavash has two darts in his hands. This is on reveal here. Actually, that's a good idea. She'll she'll resheath the uh, staff and and uh, and and draw her kunai. So, um, the kobold uh, so swoop um, starts fiddling around with the wall, and um, you see him just kind of feel along the traces. And when he feels, you see him kind of put his fingers in some of the cracks. And you hear a click. And you see the wall just kind of shift a little bit. Similar, Kavash, to when you first found those guards. And after oh, yeah. Leah did that really awesome uh, finisher on one, um, and you found the uh, hidden switch, this is much slimmer in this respect. Um, it's another hidden area that they've managed to put here. How many more of these are this there? This place is, like, filled with this stuff. This is awesome. <laughs> Here, let me go. Get right, out the way. Thing. <laughs> All right. So, um, you push it aside. <laughs> yep. Yeah, take a look around. All right, so um, in this room here, there's... Let's see. Is there, yeah, so in this room here, there's uh, two doors that you can see. Um, part of it's partially collapsed in. Um, whatever was in here long ago has been, you know, removed or taken out um, by the masks. So there are two doors that you can see. There's a door over here and a door over here. Coolness. And there's nothing in the room. Uh, there is a faint torch just kind of, like, burning here, just like you've seen through other complex. So somebody's been in here. 
And is this like pit off to the right? No, it's, it's rubble. So oh, okay. this is all rubble because uh, so a lot of this complex not a hole. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like the ceiling and stuff caved in here, just like in the other tunnels. Um, this place has okay. um, been built on old ruins of something else. So this whole place, this whole town, they try to revitalize from some uh, old town that was long lost. Gotcha. And from some of the stories you heard, it was lost from an orc uh, invasion. Super sexy. Let's check this door here. All right. And when you say check the door, uh, what exactly are you doing? I'm investigating it for traps of any kind. Okay. All right. All right. Is the he is there a keyhole? There is a keyhole. He will peek through the keyhole. The room is completely dark. It will listen at the keyhole. Okay, roll a perception. You're not hearing anything on the other side of that door. He'll try the door. The door is locked. He will pick the door. <laughs> okay, <laughs> roll your uh, your uh, thief's kit. Now, this is where people can assist him with that if you feel he needs assistance. But um, Kavash does not appear to need any assistance on this. So you start going to work on the door, just kind of kneeling down. Um, you know, you listen to it. Um, you're not hearing anything. There's no lights. You can't really see anything uh, beyond it. Um, the door's obviously locked. So you bring out your toolkit and taking the little lock picks, you're feeling for the little tumblers uh, in the lock. And after a few seconds, you just hear... Put the tools away with a slight grin of satisfaction. <laughs> Open the door. All right. Let's see, let me select that. Perfect. All right. Uh, I assume you're going to uh, use your uh, lantern to illuminate the yes, room? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so uh, you should be able to see inside now. And let's see, this is not updating here. All right. Are so those chests. Yeah. Um, so basically, this is what you see in here. When you open the door and you you unhood your lantern uh, and you illuminate the room, you um, see various little racks of weapons along the sides of the walls of this chamber. Um, this includes like little spears, swords, crossbows, bolts. Um, there's also about a dozen dirty red cloaks uh, that hang from this uh, room, as well as um, little matching facial red masks that you've seen these guys wear. Um, so, by the looks of this here, um, one could assume that they may have either more number or ambitious plans to expand their numbers and are stockpiling arms and armors or have the numbers to equip that. Okay. And when there's two large chests on the opposite wall. Um, that, that was just to show that there's the, the items in here, the, the weapons. Oh, okay. So um, I actually have like the... the some kind, y'all. Yeah, so there, there's about, you know... Like I said, there's spears, short swords, long swords, light crossbows, quivers. So this is a short little swords. armory of sorts. Uh, I'll take a short sword. Hey, hey, Dave. Yes. Is this a door as well? Yes, that, that is a door up there. Um, I don't know why the, the actual door image didn't show up on there, but I'm not worried. That's why when you first came in, I said there was a door here and a uh, door where it's not letting me click on Kavash. Since he's dealing with that door down there, Leo will check out this one. Okay. What about mm -hmm. down here? This looks like some kind of entrance. Like, part of the wall is not there. Uh, no, some of that, because I had to re um, put on here, uh, those are the only two uh, doors up there. Uh, there are some corner pieces that just didn't quite fit all the way, but they're supposed to be full walls. 
Okay, thought I'd ask. Oh, no, no, by all means. Uh, anytime, it never hurts to ask that stuff. I'm just marking here that uh, Kavash uh, takes a short sword from the armory. So I know the full count of these here. Okay. All right, and I should really keep that on here. All right, so uh, Leah, you said you were looking at the other door in the meantime. Um, yeah. So let me do this here for the investigation. All right, um, so you're not really seeing any uh, traps in there. So on this door here, um, now this door, does not appear to be locked. Okay. She will um, just whisper, over here, I think this one, this door is open. Uh, I'll peek through the, if, if there is some kind of a hole, I'll peek through. If not, I'll just listen. Okay. Um, no, there is a keyhole. Um, so, um, roll your uh, perception here. Um, and really, I should have been doing this for um, Kavash on this one, but... Um, just roll it regularly. On the next one, it would be with disadvantage. Okay. So, I, that's what I did last time with it because you guys were using the uh, keyholes. I, so, I rolled poorly. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't um, see anything there. Uh, let's roll a um, another one here for um, listening. Just being really quiet and trying to focus, closing your eyes, cupping the listening your hands. Doesn't get disadvantage, right? Uh, the listening, no, just the the peeking okay, because well, you're doing it through a smaller. You, uh, he didn't point. fail because I couldn't see anything, so I rolled listen. Yeah, no, no, that's fine because you were doing two different, um, using two different senses, just like Leah was mentioning, and she was going to use sight first and then uh, listening on that. So I was just saying in the future from last session, yep. yeah. So I'll, because I did kavashes without it this time, I wanted to be fair to Leah when she did hers. I, so yeah, I didn't matter. I rolled pretty poorly on both of them. Yeah, and it would be like, oh, well, positive. now you have this advantage. All of a sudden, I was like, no, let me just let you get this done, and then the next one in the future will do that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, yeah, listening to it, um, you're you're not hearing uh, anything beyond it. Um, you're not even... Um, all the thing really that you hear is an occasional little crackle, so, like, a little bit of a flame, but a very faint, small flame. So maybe a, like a little sconce or a torch might be burning in here, but outside of that, um, that that's all that you hear from this uh, chamber beyond. I got gotcha. you. Um, she'll mount motion those over. I don't see that this door doesn't appear trapped. I don't hear anyone on the other side. Okay, and the uh, one quick question still about the in the armory. Were there armors and uh, like? Stuff too. No, there, there wasn't any armor, like, you know, no leather armor, things like that. Um, the, the only things that were, you know, that you could wear was the um, cloaks and the masks. So they had red cloaks and red masks, which yeah, you've I'll seen these one. guys have. I'll take one of each. Okay. Put them in my, in my belongings. All right, just marking here as Might well. Might be a useful disguise. Hey y'all, uh, yeah, everybody should take a mask and a cloak. That way, if we, you know, if there's like a gathering of these dudes, we could like disguise ourselves amongst them and then get the other well, surprise. I haven't seen any women in their ranks yet. It, or or we children. might stick out. Well, with a cloak and a hood, they couldn't even tell you're a, a female. And, and until a blind monk could exactly. tell that it was female. Except you, Anna. Never mind. <laughs> Was there any nice weapons in there? Um, just some spears, um, short swords, long swords, uh, and some uh, light crossbows. Yeah, she was just asking if there's anything that stuck out as Was fancier there than the rest. Uh, yeah, they have bolts. Um, they had quivers of bolts. Okay, for I'll the, take uh, another quiver of bolts then. So I'll have 40 bolts now. Okay. Like I said, the, the, it looks like either they have the armament for a lot more members than you've seen, or they're gearing up for an expansion that um, is, that's not a good sign. They're recruiting. Do we want to bring these to the villagers? 
I don't think we should worry about it now, but it might be something we do later. If we are not planning to bring them to the villages, we should set them on fire. Uh, I'll again, go for it. down with the fire. <laughs> again, when, later. When, once we have secured the captives, if that room should spontaneously burst into flames, there's nothing we could do about it. Don't give him any ideas. I would rather them not end up in the hands of the enemy. If we're not going to put them to use for the town, I say we destroy them. Well, I agree giving them to the town's a good idea, but we can't do that right now. Like I said, once we have found the captives, whatever else happens, no. this happens. No, Inna. Do not give him that opening. Faith will take a crossbow and some quivers. Actually, no, she won't. Um, she's got something else here. I forgot she had a... Uh, sure Vosh ready to light crossbow to back up Leah when she goes in the room. Yeah, Leo, Leah will push the door open. Or pull it, depending on what is needed. Okay, so uh, Leah opens the door and... Let's make sure this reveals for you. And death flies out at us. <laughs> It's funny you should say that as you open the door and you I see three sarcophagi in here as well as another door on the eastern wall here. Um, this chamber does have a single um, torch uh, burning on it um, right over here. But uh, you're not seeing any other persons uh, in this room here. I mean, sarcophagi makes sense because they're this now, is, these aren't catacombs. Yeah, it's a dust, very dusty crypt, um, and they're propped up against, uh, you know, the walls here. Um, let's see. Now, the sarcophagi have little images carved in them, but it's very dusty and dirty, uh, so you can't really make out what's on them. Now, Grenelford, as you um, go up there, something happens. Oops. So, as you go right here... The sarcophagi lids um, start moving open. Animation. And yes, um, so pretty cool, Dave. So, and when they do that, this should be opening. There we go. Look at Dave all high speed, man, with like moving lids. <laughs> Three skeletal what? beings start. I shoot it. <laughs> start coming out of the uh, sarcophagi here. Um, now their clothings, um, they do appear to look like they have, um, you know, bits of you know armor and weapons, but it looks like they're kind of decayed uh, from time and neglect. But they still look like they can still do some damage uh, with those. Um, so. On that, Uncle Grunfer, watch out! I just, I just wanted to see what the symbols were, uh, <laughs> and now you know. <laughs> so, all right, um, which you can still do because they, they didn't destroy anything. They just, you know, opened the lids here. Now we're gonna roll uh, initiative, and let me make sure that turn trackers up. Okay. Creative five initiative. I need I to be right back a minute well. though. Uh, okay. If uh, if my turn comes back and I'm not here yet, I'm gonna disengage and then uh, change my uh, psionic focus to mastery of wood knife. He's gonna engage in hand to hand combat. He's gonna give him That's hugs. What I heard. Hugs for the hug god. For kill. <laughs> uh let's see faith why why are you not doing anything uh okay wow okay i r t loser 
Why y'all want Grimfur to die, man? Hey, Faith got a 17 with a penalties to dexterity, so... Nice. So... No, it, it's, it's, hey, we've all seen Gruntlefurt can tank pretty well. Barring a crit, no, he tanked he really well. He got his face ripped off. That was a crit! I said barring a crit! I'm pretty sure he went down in every engagement that he was tagged in close quarters with. No, like, he seriously was tanking in the first adventure. All right, so um, Inna is going to have the first action here. So now, Inna, you do have this um, little cobalt with you. So that is going to um, have your movement with that because you're dra physically dragging it along. Is he small enough to ride on my shoulders? Um... <sighs> I mean, it can, but that's going to give you so many disadvantages. <laughs> but, I mean, if you wanted to climb on your shoulders and attempt to do that, sure. I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to... Because that is an extra... Of, uh, the One of the rules that we discussed, uh, the option rules, is the extra actions. And one of those actions is actually climbing onto creatures larger than yourself. So for those listening, we, we have um, quite a bit of um, optional rules in effect. Wait a minute, he's a winged cobalt. How high are the ceilings? Uh, the ceilings in here, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Uh, about 10 feet. All right, swoops, buddy. You're going to have to be my balloon right now, okay? And hoping he flies. Because Ina's walking in. Um... Well, skeletons are probably somewhat resistant to necrotic energy, so I'm not going to waste spells on that. All right, so with a uh, 15... Uh, you do manage to uh, hit that one in front of you. So, um, still attached to the uh, kobold here, you make your way past Kavash, but the, the kobold's still behind Kavash. Um, and as you march in here to this thing that's just getting out of this uh, crypt here, uh, one of the ones surrounding Grenelford, you unsheathe Requiem. Um, and as you unsheathe, just with that same motion, just come across with your blade uh, right across it. Um, going up almost in an up diagonal motion from its lower uh, left to upper right of its torso. Um, it lets out a hiss like a <sighs> as the blade strikes into it. You hear the blade scrape against bone, cutting through the rotted armor. Um, and you do uh, 10 damage to it. Yep, and thank goodness she's a dual wielder because. Uh... <laughs> She's right. probably going to miss that one. <laughs> no, actually, that does hit. Uh, again, this is rotted armor that it has, so it does give protection, but not as good as it would have if it was in its prime. Um, so coming back with the offhand, um, as it just kind of rocks and as it, like, restabilizes, your offhand blade just comes right across, uh, hitting it uh, across the vertebrae on the neck, and the head just kind of pops off, hitting the wall, and just kind of bounces across the room as the the bones from the body just collapse from the uh, energies uh, leaving its form. And uh, I think that was Inna's turn. See, Mr. Swoop, that's why you have to listen to me and be my friend. <sighs> All right. Well, oh, crap. Um... Let's see. 
Grinnellfort, would you be okay with Faith being right behind you? I don't know where you're trying to... Well, Chris, are you, is he still him. AFK? Yeah, I think uh, he said presume he's going to try to withdraw entirely. and okay. He has room to run, even if she's there. Okay, yeah, I'm trying not to blockade him in. Um, so she's going to instead go to here. And try to attack this one here. All right. Uh, oh yeah, she gets two attacks. All right. So, long sword attack one uh, will hit for six, and her other one is going to miss. Ah, Faith, you're not letting me down with your really crapper rolls. All right. So she um, back, pulls. Sorry. Out, not a problem. Um, so Faith pulls out her long sword and um, just wielding it uh, in her hands here. She. Strikes out at the uh, skeletal being uh, right next to Grenelfurt, striking it, cracking uh, some of the bone underneath the armor. Uh, she goes around for another strike on it, but the creature parries her blade strike. Um, and that is all that she can do here. So, um, Kavash. I'll shoot this one here. Because it's got a line without hitting his friends. And miss. Well, and I don't think it's set up right either. But I missed anyway, so I'll fix it. No, see, you hit him for zero damage. A seven <laughs> doesn't hit. It, it, yeah. It's stuck in his armor. Why did it roll zero? How is that even? Did you add the right uh, things on it? <sighs> no, yeah, so I'm looking zero, at it right now. Zero. Yeah, it I'm looking at it, and it says one die eight plus dex. And on my sheet it says d8 plus three. I don't know why it rolled zero. There it goes. It actually rolled that time. That was weird. Maybe the first roll glitched out or something. All right. So just to let you know, um, in the future, when you fire in a melee, um, people nearby to it count essentially like uh, cover, like a wall would. So yeah. it, you're still firing into a melee. No matter, with that. got you. No matter if they're on the opposite side or off the side. If they the would side, have cover. Like so way. if you treat your, your people like they were obstacles. So if they're like, if Grenelfort was, let's say I'm just going to move his token like right above him and Faith wasn't there, then you could fire without any consequence. But oh, okay. Yeah. So just, just so we're clear on that in the gotcha. future, I don't want any surprises uh, with that. Okay. Um, so anyway, but it doesn't matter. You, you missed, and you wouldn't even hit the, the cover. In fact, um, Grinnellford just feels like a, a draft as the, the bolt just whips by him, you know. Is it breezy in here? So, all right, uh, with that, the creatures are going to go here. Um, so they had a 13 on the initiative counter. All right, so one's going to attack uh, Faith because Faith hit it, and the other one's going to try to attack uh, Grenelford here. Let's see going to do so with a uh, short sword here, um, an old rotted uh, blade, and that shouldn't be rolling with, that should be normal. Um, all right, so it did hit an AC at 20 for five damage. On who? Grenelford. All right. And it only gets one attack, so... This other one is going to do the same against Faith. And, ooh, I think that hit Faith. Yes, it did. Uh, also for five. She's still conscious. All right. So, um, yeah, so they start swinging their rotted blades as they come from these crypts. Um, one of them manages to surprise Grenelford just... Um, 
wasn't expecting this as he was trying to ins- look at the uh, engravings, the carvings on the sarcophagi, um, and the blade just kind of slashes into his uh, robes there. Um, now, Faith, um, still battling this thing, um, does barely manage to get past some of her uh, armor here, and as it's striking, um, just kind of cuts into her. Not a really bad cut, but, you know, she's bleeding noticeably. Um, she's still got her guard up, but she's fine here. Now, Leah, on the other hand, is perfectly fine, and... Um, might actually just end this entire encounter right now. Yeah, Leah is going to um, delay so that Grenelfort can move so that she can get to both of them. Okay. Because I know he was going to retreat and I can only reach one of them right now. Alright. So I have an idea. Alright, so you're uh, holding, so I'm just marking it as you have held here. And uh, Grenelfort, it is your turn. All right, the, the disengage takes an action, right? Yes. So I'll be doing that. I'll go here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into uh, my um, psychic focus of Mastery Wooden Earth. And um, hmm. I think that's it, actually. I think that's all I got. All right, so um, Grunelfert uh, focuses all his uh, attention on um, not leaving an opening for these things to uh, strike at him as he um, strategically um, falls back, um, shifting his mental focus on uh, different uh, disciplines, um, just preparing for the uh, next action here. So now it is uh, Leah's turn since you held your action until he went. Okay, Leah's going to step forward while she pulls her staff off, and she's going to start by cracking this guy, hopefully. Okay, uh, will your attack? That is going to hit. Um, okay. So, five to him. All right, so you uh, walk up, and... Um, as you walking up, you pull your bow staff and kind of do a little uh, martial art twirl with it. And as you finish the twirl, you take the um, you know the power in your your hips and body as you twist your body into the uh, strike on it, um, cracking it uh, alongside the um, where the shoulder and the neck meet. Um, it is still standing, but your bow goes in about your bow staff goes in about a good inch and a half uh, into the bone so you definitely broke some bones there um, causing a good bit of significant damage to its uh, upper torso here but it is still combat uh, worthy it is still um, swinging okay I am going to spend a key point uh, to activate flurry of blows Um, and she's going to continue the spin and, and launch a spin kick into it Okay. It's not showing the attack rolls for the flurry. Here we go. Um, I hope that's going to hit. All right. For seven. All right. So um, on that uh, flurry, um, you kind of pivot the bow staff down and using it like a little pole, you um, use it for more leverage in your spin kick. Um, mm-hmm. your, your heel of your foot hitting the side of this thing's skull. Um, as it does so, it shatters like it was porcelain. Um, fragments of bone just go flying everywhere in here. Um, the body still um, moving with the force from that blow um, s- slams up against that wall uh, with a very loud thud um, as it slumps down. And she's going to continue... And she's going to launch a thrust kick directly into this one. Are we watching Leah turn into Luke Cage? Or Luke Kang? Pretty much. She's she's Luke Kang. Actually, this would be Johnny Caging. Johnny and Cage. I really hope this hits. Johnny Cage. That does hit. Okay. Because uh, I'm going to do something funny here. Uh, low damage, but hey. That's that two funny. sessions in a row with the Mortal Kombat reference. Um, 
but he, here's here's what she's doing. Uh, it needs to make a DC 13. Uh, oops, I hit the wrong one. Um, excuse me. The knock prone one. Yeah, the knock prone one. Uh, needs to make a. Um, excuse me, DC 13 yes. deck save. Fails. And so it is knocked prone. And that's it for me. That's all I can do. I was I was originally going to, um, if I knock that guy down in one hit, I was going to hit this guy, try to knock him prone, and then use the move fifteen to slam him back into the sarcophagi. But it did not work. But that's okay because now it's fully set up for for someone to wreck this thing's day. Well, uh, speaking of, um, I believe it's in his turn. Knock prone gives a advantage on melee, right? Yep. You're well. Yep, you're in five feet Stabity of it. Stabity stab. All right, uh, twenty-two will hit for nine, and well, um, no. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, the first one did it. <laughs> yeah, the first one did it. Um, so as you walk up to it, um, just looking at it, dragging your balloon behind you, um, you take. Requiem um, in hand and just come down right on this thing's head, um, splitting the skull like it was a cassava melon. Uh, only it doesn't quite split evenly in half. It kind of fragments um, the right part of the skull off. Um, so lots of little bone fragments uh, on the ground there. But it is no longer moving. The bony fingers that uh, once tightly gripped the short sword in its hand releases uh just they kind of open up and the the hilt just clatters on the stone floor clink Tina hears in her head this is why i'm the only sword you ever need that poser in your other hand clearly can't do the job and then grinnifer lets uh, requiem start talking it's my balloon my balloon <laughs> led me to victory <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, with these things uh, no longer moving here, um, what would you like to do? Um, Leah actually is going to try to try to push this, uh, push them back into their sarcophagi. <laughs> Just start like picking the bones up. Before you do that, let's take a look inside them. Check so, the room and this coffins, yeah. All right, so um, who was searching it first? Uh, Inna? Yep, first. All right, so Inna. Um, actually going through the um, the rotted tatters in the, the sarcophagi, the... Um, you know, some of the little bugs and things that, that will manage to get their way inside. Um, you do find something. Um, you find a little platinum uh, signet ring. Ooh. Is it an emblem I recognize if I roll history? Um, you can uh, check. You can roll uh, the history. Um, so you're, you can't really pinpoint the exact name of it, but from what you can tell on it, it's definitely something of, uh, noble bearing, but you're just, you don't remember like what family with it, but you remember it being nobility. Granty, have you seen this before? Are you Faith? Hmm. Is this... Let's see. Uh... Grunty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so, digging the Grunty. That's funny. Uncle Grunty now. So, Uncle um... Grunty. 
just from some of the, the notes and things that he's found and that he's read about, um, you know, combination over the, the course of his uh, time studies on Scar-Jar, Scarjar's trading post. Um, this was um, the nobles from the old town that used to be Frosthaven um, before it was um, attacked by the uh, Orc hordes that uh, wanted uh, the Spellforge. So this is probably, this was their home, um, and, you know, they overlooked the uh, town here, the old town, before it was destroyed. So wait, these are the people that made the Spellforge? They didn't make the Spellforge. This was the old town that resided by. Um, the Spellforge was a combination of um, dwarves, gnomes, and humans um, combining their talents um, in coordination with the rich mineral ores and other um, magical arcane boons in the area to create that wonder. Can I roll Arcana for knowledge on the Spellforge? Uh, yeah. Oh, come on. It's Forge that does spells. Yeah, the... Um, let's see... So, yeah, the only thing that you know on it is what most other people know on it. Um, you know, it was about 500 years ago when um, the pact was made between the gnomes, the dwarves, and the humans, uh, known as the Earth and Surslet Pact. Um, and that's where they, they kind of joined forces um, with, you know, the various human spellcasters and such uh, to combine their collective skills to create that forge. Um which is what dr kind of drove the orc war band here in the first place. Um, just rumors of that uh, spell forge because they craved um, the magical power uh, from there. Okay. So it seems that you have stumbled on a piece of history. It is the signet ring of the noble family that once presided over this town. Ooh. It may be worth something. Ian's going to make a terrible life decision and put it on. Quick, Dave, while no one is looking in the cobalt, suddenly it has a dagger appear in its throat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pop my balloon. <laughs> All right, so um, all right, so you put on the ring, and um, well, uh, I mean, it looks pretty on you. Um, it's a nice platinum ring. Yay! Brentelford is going to um, look over the symbols, though. No. Okay. Should I roll religion? Um, let's see. Uh, it would be history. So, I'll help you. I know lots of history things. Not much more than you do. So, and, um, what you could tell in here is that the sarcophagi, um, were carved, kind of depict the persons entombed within. Um, though you can't quite make out, again, all the things with it. Um, Leon knows the history, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leon can can make out the, the the two human males and the one human female. Um, definitely uh, noble bearing on here. So yeah, Leah's just like, yeah, I, I know them. I, 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 the the monastery, you know, had taught her well. The, the monks have a saying. <laughs> Don't fuck with the elf girl. <laughs> So yeah, Leah's just like, oh yeah, that that one was, uh, <laughs> you know, th this one was the the male, uh, the main, uh, you know, head of the household here. That's you know where the signet ring was taken from, and uh, you know this one was the wife, and you know this was uh, the first son. So yeah, Leah's just like pointing out every little thing here, while uh, Inna and Grinnell are just kind of scratching their heads, trying to make out to it. 
and she just like has this little um, crap eating grin you know the little elf girl just, just like spilled everything out on this family Rutherford makes a couple notes I have an affinity for royal families don't know why yeah so apparently the, the family name uh, also um, Anna, uh, Anna, uh, Leah, um, was the Senzar family and uh, this must have been the uh, part of the mausoleum here uh, f that they had their little private uh, resting place. Well, after we well, finish looking around, there, there's still a problem with this room. What is that there, problem? There should be four people in it, and they're not here. There, there's a door over here. Oh. <laughs> I, um, it's hard to see <laughs> on some of these. I, I try Leah to make them as visible as possible. Leah is still being very respectful to the dead and putting them back and closing the <laughs> sarcophagi. Faith, are you well? Have you been harmed? Um, I mean, she's got blood on her from when she was uh, struck by the uh, creature. Um, but um, she just kind of holds the wound out, looks at it. Um, I'm fine. Let's press on. We have people to find. Are you certain you do not want me to take a look? I said I'm fine. Ina has a spell for this moment. She seems kind of frustrated about her combat prowess more than anything. Please tell me. I will be happy to lend you some power. So, what are you doing with uh, precipitation? I'm cleaning up the blood. <laughs> Ina feels helpful. <laughs> she, Faith's you just getting frustrated. Job. She's like, Set up fine. All right, sorry, sorry. All right. Um. Well, there's a door. <laughs> door, door people, go handle it. <laughs> All right, I'm on it. Checking it with perception, senor. Alright. First of all, well, traps, of course. Right. Okay. I, out of character, I love you guys. All of y'all. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. Aw, that is sweet. It's true, too. It's sincere, also. Alright, so, so... what do I find, Dave? Um, well, you don't find any triggers or anything on the door here. You don't see anything suspicious other than um, it's got a nice sturdy lock. Um, this one much stronger than the ones that you've seen previously. And is it locked? Yes. Okay. Hey, uh, Leah. Yes? You're pretty good with them lock picks. You want to help me out over here with this? Certainly. This, this lock looks really good. So using the help action? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so roll with advantage. The thing just took a crap. Perception. Oh, oh well, the thing just took a crap, dude. The roll 20 crash on you? No, it just like, it paused for a really long time when I hit submit on the input value for advantage. Hold on. It does that if the queue gets back up. There we go. Oh, okay. So there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're 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 messing with the tunnels, and, and Leah's like, um, you know, it's over there. No, over there. She, she's like trying to point out all the little tumblers. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for the help. So, all right. Uh, yeah, you easily uh, get that. Um, you find all the right uh, sweet spots for it, and you unlock the door. And beyond. Whoop, 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 whoop. Nope. Death awaits again. No, I'm just kidding. 
Actually, I didn't uh, ask. It would never fit in here. Well, actually, no, I take that back. Um, there would be one Taras that would fit in here, but sadly, he's not in this edition. Um, there was a um, giant miniature space Tarask, um that was a familiar for a character um, in a group that I ran a long time ago. He was always unconscious. He had a sweet tooth for uh, chocolate, and he made the um, caster um, that had it um, had the hunger of a Tarask, so they ate like Goku. Okay, so can you see inside the room? Yes. Okay. What's in there? Um, so, uh, in this room here, what you see... Uh, Alright, so as you take a step in there, Kavash, um, the floor gives way. The flagstones uh, fall away in this uh, corridor here. Uh, so there were little uh, uh, false stones uh, under your feet. And as it collapses in here... Um, let's see. I need you to make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Uh, you already did. Already Fantastic. Did. So as the floor gives way, you quickly turn around and grab onto the ledge of the door frame as the floor um, gives way here. Let's see. Let me put that to that. So do I catch myself or not? Yes, you catch onto the door frame, dangling. Um, it looks like this pit was a good ten feet deep here. Awesome. Um, so yeah, you managed spikes to spikes in the bottom or what? No spikes, just um, oh, just a just a trap to hold people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, noob mistake. As I climb out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant to do that. No, no, he 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 knows when he does something stupid. No mistake, won't happen again. So, Every but that did, time it did make a lot of noise. I just moved the token like a dummy. Uh, was there a, a like a ledge around it, or that people would use to not fall in the trap? Um, it looks like they yeah, they have a very small lip on it. Um, it's only like oh, about okay. three inches. There may have been another thing to keep that from falling in. Um, oh. with that, but yeah. Got you. Since I'm hanging off and it's like five feet away to the other from the to the other side of the pit, could I do like some cool acrobatic deal where I push off the wall, do a spin in midair, and then catch on to the other side? Sure can. Let's do that. Cause I'm flashy and crazy. All right. Watch me roll a freaking one, y'all. <laughs> Oh, nice. Very nice. That is not a one. No, it is not a one indeed. So in character, he goes, new mistake, and then does like some <laughs> freaky acrobatic. <laughs> All right. So, cool so which, which part of the mistake? So which part of the pit were you moving on? Because there's lots to, of five foot areas. Yeah, um, I wanted so, to move across to where the door is on the other side, or the the, well, the door. The door is right here. So you can I move to catch here. On to that part. Yeah. Okay. So you catch on to here. Okay. Technically, I was wanting to like catch on to the flooring, being still in the pit. You know what I mean? You want to dangle? Yeah. Okay. So. You dangle, and as you dangle, the door opens up um, as a one of the masks opens the door to see what all the noise was. And he sees this little child dangling from the door ledge, and he sees the other door open with this half-chewed-up gnome face. <laughs> and he's like, Grindelhor can see him. He's immediately casting um, Psychic Hammer. Okay. This is the day Grendel for to wait for. So, um, all right, so we're going to need to roll initiative on this as he shouts, We got company! This is fascinating. Man. So it's an interesting predicament. <laughs> Let's see. 
Um, now he should be auto. Yeah. With that. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Damage um, to the That's right. weird. It didn't auto add me. Oh my god. Why is this lagging? Uh, plus that. Roll 20 is doing some weird stuff today, for real. It is, yeah, because mine, mine's a little laggy more than normal. Uh, I'm not sure what the heck's going on. And I, I, like I said, I double checked the crossbow. It was set up properly. It's the kobold. He, he's sabotaging your roll twenty. Kill him. Kill him yeah, now. Yeah, that bastard. I'm, I'm gonna stab him in the eye. <laughs> hey, luckily I got the same roll twice. All right. Uh, ooh, ooh, I gotta roll faiths again. Um, yeah. Not, not near as good. Um, and that didn't add her to the damn tractor. What the hell? She was selected, too. Well, we'll just have to manually add her. Um, who are you missing? Uh, Grinnellfords. And I know you, he... you put me twice. What? God damn it. Alright. Yeah. Okay, and... Yeah, Grinnellford definitely rolled. Let me add manually add him. Whoa! No. There we go. Okay, so come on, come. All right, get out of that. Yeah, roll twenty is being really weird right now. Let me see if it keeps their initiatives when I... Okay, good. It was acting, it was acting like Grinnell, Furts, and Fates were still being edited, which is not a good sign. Alright. So, and they got that. Alright. Um, oh, crap. The highest was a 13. Really? Alright. So... And it's... Yeah, this is definitely... Um, Something crazy with roll twenty, huh? Yeah, yeah, because um, it put their name as Shahakwin again, <laughs> but it, it kept the right values. But the name, it's it, you'll see it on the video. It's just like wow. Um, all right, so they got a fourteen, um, so they will be going off first. So he sees this little um, child right below his feet, and huh. Um, yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to try to kill me. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's gonna try to take a swing at you here. So, can I let go and drop down the five feet left into the pit? Um, reflexively. Yes, but you would be risking taking fall damage. I'll do that and make an acrobatic check to try to not take fall damage. No, I'll go ahead and swing at the pig. Okay, um, let's see. Let's see this guy. So, he's going to take two little swings at the little boy hanging on the little... Wow! Two! Wow. Yeah, he has two attacks. Wow. All right, so the first one, um, yeah, had no ch ironically had no chance of hitting you. Um, apparently, the shock of seeing a little boy there, um, as well as all these other intruders here, just, I don't know, freaked him out, whatever. He, he, he misses you. I mean, he just completely misses your hands holding the ledge. So instead of aiming for your hands here, uh, he instead tries to aim for you, just stabbing straight down. And as he does so... Um, he does hit an AC of 21. Um, the blade just coming in contact with your, uh, right in front of your right chest and shoulder, just slicing downward um, for six. Ow. And, uh, let's see. So Man, I'm not on top of my game today, y'all. I need to I need to state what I do. I, I should have been doing the dodge action like I have every other time I've been scouting or doing anything like that. And I'm stupid. 
Well, I don't think you can actually, like, do dodge until, yeah. like, combat yeah. starts anyway. No, dodge is an action. You can always take the dodge. Yeah, when it's your turn, you can take uh, your actions. Uh, outside of your turn, you can only take reactions. And No, I mean previously, like, going down the corridor, take the dodge action, and then move out in there. Even though we weren't in combat, that works. Yeah, so instead of, you know, stealthing, you're being more cautious to exactly. possible threats. Yeah. Yeah, I get so what you're saying. So that's me dropping the ball is what that is. At the, uh, sorry. So you see another one come up uh, over here, um, and he's got a crossbow in hand. But um, he doesn't have a bead on you. You're, you're way too down in the pit. There's no way he could possibly hit you. Um, so let's see. And, yeah. Yeah, he's got no shot on anybody. All right, so that ends their turn. Leah, you are up. Okay. Um, so I have 10 because I need to be able to move. That's a 10-foot pit, right? Uh, 10 foot deep, 10 foot across. Okay. Uh, that would be athletics to jump it, wouldn't it? Um, uh, athletics or acrobatics, depending on what you want to use for that. Okay, yeah, she's gonna she's gonna try to run forward and acrobatics like basically she's gonna try to like kick off the wall, like do almost a wall run to try to get over. So like Prince of Persia or uh, Titanfall two kind of wall running. Yeah, Prince of Persia. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and again we, uh, for those watching, we do have the optional rules to switch um, abilities for a certain check, so we can swap out acrobatics for athletics for terms of jumping and things like that. So all right, go ahead. All right, that's the acrobatics check. Five, uh, ten, mm -hmm. fifteen. She's gonna try to kick off. Steps uh, on Kavacha's head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lands over here. Twenty, twenty-five. Thanks for the assist. Thirty, thirty-five, and uh, her interaction will be to draw her kunai and hurl it at this guy. Okay. So on the plus side, Kavash, even though she stepped on your head, you barely felt the thing. I mean, um, she could walk on six feet of snow and not leave an imprint. And horribly misses. <laughs> yeah, so um, it looked good coming in, and throw the you throw the kunai, and it hits the wall here. He's just too much cover here, um, and it just falls into the pit. Yeah, and that's all I can do for now, so that's it for me. All right. In a... Hmm. Well, Anna looks at the pit and realizes <laughs> she can't exactly jump it. You can play Toss the Gnome. She doesn't have the strength to play Toss the Gnome. Doesn't mean you can't play <laughs> a it. Pit is, a pit is her mortal enemy. <laughs> is there any way she can grab onto the ledge and drop down? Um, she can, um, she would still take a little bit of fall damage, though, even dangling. So, like, it should be, like, the same risk as Kavash with that. Wouldn't be as much as if he fell in, you know, from triggering it, but there's still going to be a little bit of, uh, potential damage. Basically, um, you would take a d6 if you did that. Well, Anna's just gonna end her turn. Take a dodge action and end her turn because she can't make over that pit. All right. Uh, Faith is going to take out her um, heavy crossbow and try to shoot this guy. Thankfully, with Kavash being dangling technically five feet lower than that, um, is not providing any cover whatsoever for that guy. So, But the wall is still providing some cover. So she is still going to try to hit this guy. Um, ho! Natural 20. Um, seven plus, 14 damage on this guy. Holy crap. Um, is that faith? 
That was Faith shooting a heavy crossbow into this guy. Holy crap. Still yeah, crazy. and he's going to need to make a um, system shock, too. Let's see. Uh, let's see if there was a she got a heavy thing. crossbow. Yeah. That's the stuff. She was hired on as a uh, warrior escort. Not Hans's type of escorts, the actual, you know, ones that, um, you know, protect people along the, the way. Oh, he's out there escorting right now. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so, let's see, Constitution. Uh, makes the Constitution, so no uh, check on that. Okay. Does do a lot of damage to him. Um, she got a nice, good shot. Um in the upper chest, uh, where there's less uh, armor protection. Um, not in the throat, but just, you know, kind of below it. Um, the guy, a lot of blood's pouring down on you, Kavash, uh, from this guy, and he's just swearing uh, under his mask. Ew. Yeah. Um, and that is all she can really uh, do here. All right, Grenelford. I know Grenelford's going to have some fun with this. <laughs> Psychic hammer. Roll the strength save. Say, what's the DC? Um, it's DC 13. Okay, made the save on that. Then nothing happens. Hmm. I need to heal a little bit, so. Doesn't even do damage? Oh no, okay, so it's uh, only on fail. So yeah, so you try to, to hit him with the uh, force hammer, and uh, he manages to keep his uh, footing there, um, managing to roll off the brunt of the force damage. Kavash. Okay. Uh, dang, would I be would I like count as prone if I tried to attack from here? Ah, uh, technically. Um. Yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, hey, wait. Yeah. What's up? I can still change my psychic focus and use it. Okay. Um, what do you want to do? Um, I want to. I want to change my psychic focus to the um, mantle of command, and I'm going to use my reaction to move Ema. So five, and then down ten. Half your movement. So that would be ten. Um, you can do five more. So uh, I suppose in, end it here. I mean, it's a ten foot pit. I'd be going straight down. So I guess yeah, that would be fifteen. Okay. Okay. So Inna is in the pit. Kavash is going to uh, use a bonus action to disengage from the foot. Okay. He's going to move right there and shoot him. Okay. Or try, try to. to. <laughs> and yeah, he, he did basically what he did with the kunai is just kind of twirl behind that wall for cover. Um, so that your bolt just kind of hits the wall. Part, pieces of the bolt kind of shatter and rain down on Inna. Oops. That's uh, okay for me. It's collapsing. <laughs> okay, and let's see, they're going to go here. Um, let's see. They're going to switch to their crossbows. Well, the other one's going to switch his crop, but the other one already still has his out. Okay. Let's use this for speed here. Okay, so... Um, all right, so Kavash, um, yeah. 
this one right here um, hits an AC of 19 for 3 yeah. damage. And this one right here um, fires at uh, Faith, and even with her cover, um, still manages to hit an AC of 20. So uh, she gets three. Yeah, you take three. Uh, Faith takes seven. Uh, she's still up. She's, you know, she is showing uh, more signs here. So she gets hit in the upper left uh, shoulder there. Um, just kind of, you know, winces pain um, from it. And they got to reload on that. So uh, no multi attack on them. Um, all right. And Leah, it is your turn. All right. This door is open, right? The door here? Yeah. Yeah, that is wide open, yeah. 5, 10, 15, so I'm in the room with them. <laughs> they had crossbows, so they don't get to reaction attack me. Nope. Uh, it's 15. Uh, she's going to... That's um, the one that's already uh, badly hurt from the uh, heavy crossbow bolt. Yeah, she's going to go ahead and... Uh, whip. Uh, She's going to continue her movement here, uh, and she's going to two-handed smash this guy with her uh, staff. Okay. Do I have advantage or anything because they're using ranged weapons? No. No, you don't have okay. any advantage on them, but... That won't do dick. <laughs> uh, but she will continue her movement and use her bonus action to, at the very least, she's going to kick off this wall and attempt a flying elbow smash. Okay. <laughs> I hear that's trademarked of the masked fighter there. Gotta be careful. Oh no, you haven't seen that one. All I right, found well, out a legal way to do a power bomb. Alright, so, <laughs> uh, that definitely hits. And does the lowest possible damage. The that's fine. <laughs> because that is, that elbow is enough to uh, break some vertebrae here where that poor, poor man um, goes is driven down into the flagstone floors, uh, driving that bolt all the way through his body. And Ow. then she's just going to turn and look at the remaining guy and that's it. This little elf girl just comes wall running into the room, uh, tries to hit him, um, misses um, as he just kind of ducks out the way. And then she dashes over to the next guy doing the, um, you know, off the wall elbow drop onto the, his buddy there. <laughs> and, Ask and uh, you shall receive. <laughs> all right. Uh, in a, <laughs> you're at the bottom of this uh, pit with broken crossbow bolts raining down upon thee. What do you do? Uh, standard day for me, I guess. If I move here, can I see him? Um, you can. Um, so he will have a little cover bonus from the wall, but um, that's it. It's not the major cover bonus. I'll take that. I'm going to hit him with hex. Right. And then I'm going to take my pot shot at him. The dice hate us today. <laughs> All right, so yeah, again, man. Um, now more rocks are falling on her. <laughs> she's just scared, worried that the whole place is going to collapse. Uh, you know, she's the energy spiraling up her form, coming out her fingers, and um, fires up, and she aims. Just the angle's just too off. She hits the ceiling uh, right above the wall there. A um, little bit of flagstone rubble comes crackling down. Still having a hard time adapting to casting through her sword now. And, uh, okay. Um, alright, Faith. Um, I mentioned I hate combat NBCs. Uh, let's see, she's firing a heavy crossbow. Ooh, I, uh, don't think that... No, that just misses. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't have this cover bonus. That misses way. So she's firing, um, she's hitting the corners of the wall, not able to hit them. Um, bolt pieces fragmenting uh, on the flagstone here. Alright, um, 
yeah, she's uh, cursing under her breath as she's uh, loading the uh, heavy crossbow. And Grinnelfurt, it is your turn, sir. Okay, uh, can't really, can't really see to do the other thing I wanted to do, so I'm just gonna go with psychic hammer again. He would be here as well. Against the only one I can see, this guy. Okay. Strength save. Okay, it's rolling normal now, and he fails. Ooh. Well, I'm going to dump him in the pit. <laughs> and he takes full damage, six damage. Oh, nice. Uh, is, so... is it up to ten feet, or is it ten feet? It the... is up to ten feet. Okay, I was going to say otherwise. He has got a body raining down upon him. Let me, let me double check that. Up to, yeah, up to 10 feet. Okay. So I'm just going to dump him in the pit. Okay, so he takes an additional 8 damage from falling into the pit. Yay. And, and the bodies the, are just raining down upon me. And from the pitfall, he's actually going to have to make that save. And con save. Fails. And uh, Grenifer, why don't you roll, uh, actually, let me just roll it here. Um, let's see. Do a 10 here. Um, I think... I think that was no reactions. Let me see. Uh, disadvantage. Uh, yeah, can't take uh, reactions to lane the next turn. So, all right, but he's in the pit, and he is what we call prone. So, and and curse. Bringing me the bodies. <laughs> that uh, first that the the roof was falling in. Now the bodies are falling in. Just not in his day. You gotta admit, it's cool being able to throw people <laughs> off the cliffs. Kavash, you have this uh, gentleman that's uh, prone here. Um, Is this the rare time when uh, when I don't have disadvantage shooting a prone person? Because I just lean over the pit and his body's prone. Which is a fully presented target, and I shoot down on this flat body. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, let's see. He's presenting usually, a full target, doo doo. Yeah, because yeah. usually. Uh, yeah. Um, prone dis I'll, I'll let it go with that because um, it, it's a fair uh, thing for that. Anakin, I have the high ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I will shoot him with the light crossbow. Or try to again. That, Bam. That that will hit and yeah, uh that, and looks that will max um, damage. That will shuffle loose the mortal coil on that. Wait, was he next to Anna? Yeah. In yep. the pit on the floor, face first. It's 13, not 11. Even more dead. Where the extra? Oh yeah, yeah, because because uh, of that. Attack. Yep, that is and right. And then uh, he will move more into arrows. the room. More arrows are falling upon me. <laughs> Bodies and arrows. There you go. Cover in the door. He covers the door, and that's the end of my turn. All right, and um. There's no more mass marauders there. Leo will call out to um Inha. Can can you grab my kunai while you're down there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this... no, let me let me check for them. There's a lot of stuff that came down here. It's the long black one with the ring at the end. You can't oh, well, miss here, it. Here it is. Thank you. Ina, can you help me with the pit? I'm probably not the best person to help with the pit. 
Here, I'll catch you. The pit is the most feared obstacle of this adventure. Grinzelfurt that is amazing. Of, um, hangs off the side and lets Zena help him down. And Leah will help him up. <laughs> I'm assuming Grinzelfurt can telepathically get the rest of us back over once he's. I do not have that ability. I cannot float you over a pit. Oh. Wait a minute. Path only deter doesn't determine up or down? Uh, no. I can only bring you in a direction. Oh, well, um... It's I not... will roll my acrobatics check to minimize that fall damage, then. I misunderstood how you did it. This, this is how the ability reads. Um... While focused on this discipline, when you end your turn and didn't move during it, you can use your reaction to allow one ally you can see within 30 feet of you to move up to half their speed following a path of your choice. To move in this way, the ally must, mustn't be incapacitated. Alrighty. Oh, oops, that's why I didn't roll damage. Yeah, Ina takes six. All right. Leah will still help Ina up. Don't know how much help Leah will be, but Leah will try. Alright, uh, Faith is gonna try acro. No, um, probably. Uh, let's see, I, I, athletics to. Use the lip. I, I don't think Ina can actually jump high enough. I need a rope. <laughs> Toss me Wait. a rope. Uh, Not the one with the well, that, that's tap. what she's trying to do here. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's only ten feet, so if like Leah leans down with her hand, you should be able to reach it with your. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm not questioning um, that. So, all right, so make um, make an athletics. Um, actually, folk, uh, Leah and um, in a make athletics because you're trying to pull her up, and she's trying to. This, this is gonna be funny. <laughs> And hey, I didn't do half bad. I did, though. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, All right. So, Faith manages to climb down without busting her butt. Um, however, um, and it's like jumping up, holding on to uh, Leah's hand and starts putting her feet on the wall, trying to climb up and... Um, while well, Leah's got you got a nice firm grip on Inna, Inna starts to kind of slip a little bit as she does. She kind of panics and holds tighter. And uh, Leah, you start to feel your body start to slide a little bit. And before <laughs> she pulls you in, you just kind of let go. <laughs> gotcha. Um. Good lord. Whoops. Grab on to something. There, I'll help. Yeah. Um, Fa no, Faith's in there. Faith's right. gonna um, use a help action for the athletics to try to. Boost it up. <laughs> they lift, lift her up by her butt. Yeah, it's just like. And we'll pull her in. <laughs> so, um, make an athletics check in exactly with exactly. advantage. Dang it, Henry. This is Jackie. Exactly yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> very flustered. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, Faith so. Your butt. She's very flustered. As, as Faith's like trying to, you know, holds up her hands, kind of cups her hands so you can kind of make a little step and try to grab onto the, the ledge. You start to lose your, your grip and you start like stepping on Faith's face and she's like, ow, 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 ow. And uh, you fall down. <laughs> it's just like a mass of bodies in the pit right now. Oh my and now God. now it is time for Yakety Sack. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm surrounded by clouds. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I blame you for saying that in the very beginning. The Yakety Sax comment. Um, Faith is going to let me do it that way now. Um, so she's going to try to climb up here. And uh, what she's going to do, if she can actually make the climb, otherwise she's going to wind up falling on top of Anna, and this is just going to be horrendous. Yay! She makes her... Okay, so she makes her check. Um, her first one was a 16. Her second was a 21. So she's she's up here. And 
she takes the rope from the kobold and is start trying to pull you up Anna. she's like placing her feet on both sides of the wall leaning back and just like trying to pull the rope up um make another check <laughs> with advantage leah will help leah hold on being on the receiving end of this one leah is going to further attempt to help faith she knows how this one ends <laughs> Yeah, that's when she's, like, trying to hold her feet on both sides of the wall there to hopefully not get pulled yeah, like, into the damn like, pit. Like, Leah takes, her, Leah takes her staff and wraps it around, like, like <laughs> face midsection, and she's, like, gripping on with you for dear life. Alright, <laughs> roll your athletics with advantage, Anna. Oh, we almost did it again. <laughs> she's either very embarrassing or very erotic, not sure which. It can be both. This is, this is times like this where, where Hans should have been here. So, um, yeah, so she starts pulling the rope. You know, she's like leaning back all her body weight, um, you know, bracing against the wall. You're taking the rope, wrapping it around her, um, you know, also taking the staff and just kind of like pressing it in the wall. Um, and Anna managed to actually pull herself up finally um up over the the ledge and uh and and basically is finally with everybody uh in the group here not crying it's just raining inside <laughs> horrible Nightmare. all right all right everybody it seems like we have a lot of injuries we need to take a moment to heal so um All right. So you want to take a short rest here? No, I'm. Oh, unless everybody wants to, I, uh, I was planning on spending some side points. I'm a little bit jacked up. Eno's pride could use a healing too. If you have anything for that, Faith just steps <laughs> right up to Grentelford. <laughs> Yeah, no, Faith, I was just moving her out the, the corner way here. I'll start with Kavash. And Leah gets her, her kunai back from Anna. Um, I'm going to spend a bonus action and heal myself one point because of Mystical so Recovery. I gain eight. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's right. That's really nice, dude. I'm a one from Max. I mean, yeah. All right. Thank so, you. while you're uh, um, while you're healing him here, um, you hear some bones kind of shuffle in the other room. And it's not like a And as the bones are are shuffling, um, you see the one of the skeletal bodies not quite what they were before it's still broken up and you know damaged from what you've done but what's forming together is kind of a little more obviously visible here it's a lot of black tendrils um just kind of moving across interweaving with the bones and the skeletal um body floats over the pit and it holds out its skeletal hand and it drops two coins out of its palm before the bones fall into a pile, um, most of it rattling into the pit. And as it does so, you start to hear the wailing agony. Um, sounds like hundreds of people being uh, tormented, torn apart, um, and just viciously tortured as the ground starts to have this black energy uh, spiral start to swirl about. Um, the flagstone is it opens up um, and you see light of bright little embers and flame as these red scaled claw hands start to pull the bodies of the masked uh, marauders into the flaming uh, pits and as their booted heels are the last to go in the pits seem to gently close up as the flagstone uh, reforms as it once was wait the coins got dropped in front of Grentelford again Yes, one of the bodies from the other room got reanimated, floated over the pit, and dropped two coins. And then the flagstone opened up uh, from this black energy, and you saw this 
like flame and all you know like brimstone as these clawed mm-hmm. hands started pulling the bodies in Jeez. and uh, dude, you just hear the all the wailing really going on dude Leah just that, looks at Grinnell for her. This just what happened, like, F? one of them happened right under yeah, Leah. Yeah, what the she F, dude? She was, like, standing right over the pit as these, like, clawed demonic hands just started pulling uh, this body into this this hole underneath her and then just closed up like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, okay, Leah was not standing over the pit because the second that shit started, she was over here. I'm just making that clear right now. So Grentelford picks up the coins and he just looks at everyone like, uh... It seems your health insurance is paid for the, <laughs> for the healing you're about to receive. <laughs> and he pockets the two points. Yeah, keep the change. Feel free. <laughs> Leah's kind of starting to contemplate, start doing like non lethal takedowns from now on. Tina's <laughs> just going right, to hold so, on to swoop as like a teddy bear. <laughs> so the, the, I need to finish the healing. Uh, let me finish the healing. Ina next. As she um, holds on to her new teddy bear, because that. Grentelfurt will spend a, a bonus action to gain one health. Okay. Two points. Ina will get one more. Yay, four points. Now, uh, Faith. He's not even asking this time. He just reaches out <laughs> and, and places a hand on her arm. I'm going to spend two points this time off the bat. Yeah, she's pulling out the crossbow bolt. Wow, that's bad. So how much does she heal for? Five. Five. Okay. It's not too and I will, I will spend the bonus action again. And uh, gain two. You rock, Uncle Grunelfurt. Thanks. And while y'all are healing, where you, you just see Grunelfurt's wounds just close. Yeah, Ina's not paying attention to much right now. Leah well, is we. Yeah, Scary right Reaper hell thing. <laughs> did did um did she already gain the five? Uh, yeah, she she got the five on there. Uh, yeah. One more. Are you fucking kidding me? All right. I'm, I'm going to stop because I'm at four side points left and I want to be able to use them in a right. shit moment. All right. So, yeah, Faith was just kind of freaked out with that. She's like, what I'll the hell was that? Again, that, wasn't, that was what we believe is a death god that has been following us for a while. Just ignore it and try to forget about it. It's what and I do, I think, and it's working. I think it's been following me. It's been, I'm the one that's been getting paid. Yep. Do you, do you want to hug swoops too? It'll make I'm, it feel better. You know what? I'm, um, I'm just going to pray to my goddess over here. <laughs> At which point? I, I wouldn't mind a hug. Grimplefort hugs swoops. <laughs> swoops is like shitting himself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Swoops is like as far up by the ceiling as humanly possible, <laughs> or as koboldly possible. Oh, uh, then Grittleford can't hug him. He, Grittleford just jumps up and just Swoop just saw the ground open up and eye. demonic hands start taking bodies in. Swoop ain't touching the ground anytime soon. <laughs> I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying I'm disappointed. Nina's still trying to give him a hug. <laughs> and then is gonna try to give Faith a hug and pretty much go around the room. <laughs> Technically, she actually whispers to her God. I thought that was a female. I'm correct. Well, uh, we should probably move on. We're, our wounds are a bit better now. You're right. I want to get away from the pit. <laughs> yep. 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 You know what? I'll take lead. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get out of here. All right. I was in that pit. <laughs> hey, look, there's a passage up the here. The boss is, like, freaked out with, uh, 
with that. You know, he's like, what the hell, man? Grandpa oh, Bert looks like opening things are, shit. Grandpa Bert looks like things are about par. Leah just goes, I think we found them. So, as you come around the uh, corner there, uh, you do see um, iron bars um, about midway down that hallway. Um, and there appears to be some kind of uh, prisoner pins uh, beyond it. Um, so that, that hallway is partitioned uh, into those two areas with those iron bars just kind of walling off the east and the uh, west here. Um, beyond the bars, you can see filthy straw kind of lining the... Do we find keys on the two dead guys? Uh, no, because the... the Well, um, you found that key on that, that knoll. So you, you found the key on there, but you didn't search the, the search the bodies before they were drugged into um, the, the most fun of places, apparently. Dude, what? seriously though, man, that's not normal stuff. No, it is not. For people yep, to and be that, dealing with. Are you sure it's not normal? Because it happens in a lot of the uh, books I and, read. And, and, and Uncle Colonel Fur. It's not normal at all, Uncle Grunford. It's not. Le Leah's looking for triggers. Not even. For triggers and platforms as she approaches the door. Okay. I'm just gonna take a moment and ask her patron. Uh, have Have you ever seen that before? All right. So as you're approaching uh, Leah, you're um, fairly certain that there's no uh, traps here. Um, you're not seeing anything unusual with the flagstones. Um, Consider that they had the trap outside that other room, plus this area was guarded. They probably didn't feel a need to trap this. Yeah, I figured. So, um, the key. Yeah, she'll reach backward for someone to hand her the key. So, you know, passes the key she has forward. All right. So, you get handed the uh, silver key, and when uh, you put it in, it does unlock the uh, iron bars. And beyond the uh, iron bars, there, um, there's a pair of uh, disabled uh, human women, um, as well as a small uh, boy. Um, they're kind of dressed in plain gray, uh, very filthy tunics, um, and they have iron collars fitted around their necks. Um, they're kind of weeping and crying. Um, one of them is probably the mother, is kind of holding the, the younger two. Um, as I see you open up the, the bars and, and she's like um, please, please don't take my babies please we're not here to hurt you, we're here to help you you, you you're not slavers? no it, it, so she, uh, you know, she stands up with her, her children. She's kind of, you know, looks up at you and, you know, the others there. Um, still just, you know, frightened. Um, they, they are chained into the walls here uh, through their collars. Okay. Um, Leo will walk in and see if the silver, if the silver key fits their collars. Uh, the key does unlock the collars as well. Okay. All right, so you, you're going to, you know, each the two children and the, the mother here unlocking the mm -hmm. uh, captives. Um, and, again, she's just, just crying because um, they've been here captured for, um, you know, a couple weeks. This was a, a blacksmith, right? Blacksmith family? Uh, Woodcarver. Woodcarver, yeah. And um, this was his um, wife and his family that were taken. You're the, yeah, you are the, uh, the woodcutter's family, or woodcarver's family, correct? And she nods, um, sobbing. Well, you don't have anything to fear now. We need to get you out of here and to safety. We should go immediately. All right, so she, you know, still, you know, crying, she's, um... She takes her, her children by the hand and um, is eager to uh, leave this place. So, 
start leading them out. Yeah, I think um, the quickest way would be to go out that secret door. As the great one once said, let's get the flock out of here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Agreed. All right, so um, we're not going to move the, the tokens bit by bit here uh, for this, since you're going to be going out that uh, secret passage there. Mm -hmm. um, so as you go out to the secret passage, you're unaccosted through the um, rest of the complex here. There doesn't appear to be um, any other mass that you've encountered here um, or any other of the knolls. Is there any other rooms or anything that you wanted to stop by before you leave this place? I think we've been actually. Everywhere. Actually, Gruntelfurt is going to um, make a detour while they're walking out of the secret thing, uh -huh. but to that wi quote-unquote wizard room. Okay. And Gruntelfurt wants to take um, all of the bottled and contained specimens from the alchemy experiment experiments on the table. All right. Now, a lot of them are damaged because there seems to be some kind of alchemical explosion that occurred in here. Are there any that are not? Um, there's some bits that aren't, but not all of them are intact. Are there any that are intact? Yeah, there, there's some that are intact, but not all of them are. He will take the ones that are intact. Okay. That That's all I wanted to do. Yep. And Leah will... Uh, there's no need to stop anywhere else uh, as um, we head out. So, before you go, um, before you leave, uh, Swoop's going to kind of stop and, and is going to be like, um, if Swoop show you shiny, you let Swoop go and live? Sure. Uh, I have no problem with that. You've been perfectly cooperative and kind. We, I have no heart wish to harm you. you Even I won't kill part. you. Even I won't kill you if you show us shiny stuff. Don't you want to stay, Swoop? I need a servant. You could. I'll give you shinies and food. Do you, do you agree to sense. let Swoop go and live if Swoop's so shiny? Okay. Yes. Okay, swoop, swoop, show you shiny. Careful, big, mean, ugly thing, guard shiny. And he... We're not taking the NPCs <laughs> in there for that. So he leads you back over um, to where that um, one-eyed floating worm was. And he points to the well. Um, shiny in well. What kind of shiny? There was some stuff in the well, for real. I thought I was in the well at one point. Yeah, you didn't see anything. Uh, oh, no, I, I asked what how tall it was. Never mind. Yeah, there was the, the murky the water with space, that. Yeah. And he's saying that there's something in the water. But there was a floating eye thing that was guarding it. All right, Kavash will get dirty. <laughs> Ina says she would go down there, but um We've seen how she handles pits. <laughs> nah, he'll get dirty. Ina would drown before she ever made it out of that well. Alright, so um Kavash, you um start uh going into the uh, well. You do anything special before you go into the well? Well I I will secure myself with a piton outside of the well to a rope, just in case. Okay. How much rope? I'll just tie my whole 50 fit and use what I need as I go. Okay. So, um, you tie the rope and, and uh, you start going in the water. The water is freezing here. Um, so, as you um, start to uh, swim down here, it's, you know, it's getting darker as you swim down and it's going you know you're kind of feeling down into the well it's going down about a good 20 uh feet 
and as you're progressing down in there um you're gonna take just from the cold here why is the dice roller mini app all right um damn dave you trying to kill my dude man all right, I have not manually roll this. Uh, two here. That should show up in chat. So you take uh, one thing of um, cold damage. You're going to be taking a D, uh, 1D2 um, cold damage around while you're in here. But um, roll a perception here. Again, this is all, you know, real dark. Uh, it's really, you know, just low low light because you're so deep in this dirty, uh, murky water. Of course, your hood and lantern would not work under here. Okay, roll again because it's a disadvantage in the low light. Uh, if it's if it's dim light, I don't have disadvantage because it's skulker. Ah, okay, good good okay. note. All right, so uh, here as you're kind of looking around, holding your breath, um, going through this, and, and you see like little bits of trash, or whatever you know, floating sort of so. Um, uh, in here, uh, you see um, what looks to be part of a body at the bottom of here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like it was half chewed on by something. Um, let's see. So the body also looks like it was beaten pretty badly. Um, looks like it was uh, a human. And That's, that's nasty. Yeah. Um, Y'all ever had seen a bloated corpse? That's gross. But not only that, but you see kind of like cracked off into the side of the well there. Um, you do see what looks to be um, very well hidden in the the bottom uh, corner, the, the bottom little area of the well, a little hole. And you see what looks like to be a handle like to a box or a chest. Cool. Investigator for traps. <laughs> All right, so let's do this here. Roll for the traps. Okay, and also for the cold. Wow, it's taking that long to. So, two additional cold here. Um, you not see anything suspicious on it that would prevent you from grabbing the uh, handle on this thing or prevent you from really pulling it out. Okay, I'll pull it out. Okay. So you uh, pull out, and it is indeed a small little battered uh, wooden chest here. Um, water obviously has been able to kind of seep in here a little bit, um, but it's definitely got some weight to it. So there is something in here. Awesome. I will secure it with the rope. I will secure the end of the rope to it. <clears throat> and then use my remaining rope to pull myself out. Okay, and just take one more thing of cold here. So one more Last point time of cold. Was two, right? Yeah, it was two. So you've taken a total of four points of damage just from the the freezing cold water here. Now um, you, you pull yourself out, yeah. and you are just dripping with this murky, um, tainted water from the body um, below in it. Um, you no hug for you. <laughs> Say that now, but he starts Pull up pulling the chest, up. Guys. He starts pulling up this rope, and you see him kind of really struggling it. And as he, um, after a few minutes, just pulling this rope, you start to hear wood scraping stone, um, and then you see the edge of the rope tied to a handle of this small battered little uh, chest. As he one last heave, it goes over the lip of the well and just kind of tumbles on the ground. Um, as it does so, it, it kicks open. And you see these coins and gems kind of spill out, um, as well as um, this looks like a silver, um, s silver engraved scabbard with a blade in it. What kind of blade? Um, looks like to be a long sword. Oh. But there are there, there are, you know a few gems that are scattered about. Um, Good bit of uh, coin, a yeah. um, little bit of potions kind of rolling in little semicircles on the stone, and a little rolled up piece of paper. 
a rolled up piece of paper. Uh huh. Oh well, I don't, I don't mess with that. I hand that to Grinnell and, first. And uh, Swoop uh, holds out, holds out her hands and is like, "You let Swoop go now." Kavash cuts the bindings. And, and pulls the the little clawed hands and looks at you and, and looks at everybody and just kind of slowly backs away expecting like to be kind of shot or stabbed again um, until it's he, he, he tosses three gold coins to him Swoop, she's not having you... that possessed coin <laughs> Swoop if you ever need anything find Brentleford okay and, and Swoop just kind of still looking and she just picks up the coins and um, then turns around and just flies out uh, in the other direction where the other marauder went uh, behind the well, that other uh, cavern. Dina's going to chase after, see which how he's getting out of here. Okay, so um, unlike the other tunnel, um, which took you several minutes to go through this one, um, just a few minutes here. It actually looks like it leads to a small um, little natural cavern mouth that's on the side of the hill here. Um, again, just kind of enclosed by some shrubbery and um, the, the natural uh, plant life in the area here. So this was another uh, exit here. Hey guys, we have another way out. <laughs> Thanks, Whoop. Let's just focus on getting these people back, and don't forget to collect. Uh, don't forget to collect uh, ears from the Nalls to prove that they were slain for the bounty. Oh wait, the bodies already disappeared. Never mind. Yeah, and the ones that were in the bounty were actually um, further up on the Starlight Trail uh, to the okay. east, because that's where they're quote unquote in you know um, waylaying travelers and supply routes. So it's more of stopping them from waylaying the supply routes. Okay. And let's see. All right. Does anybody do anything else in here? I think that's everything we need to do. What What did you hand to Grenelford? I missed it. Is it a the piece of paper? Piece of paper? Um, can I read it? Um, you can make an Arcana check. I roll so low on these skill checks. The dice are just out to get us. So, it appears to be um, a spell scroll of some sort. Well, Psionics doesn't use scrolls, as mm -hmm. far as I know. Right, which is why you're not really able to... Can I tell if it's arcane more. or divine or what it is? Mm, all you can tell, because you're not really that kind of spellcaster with that, um, you you know these are arcane markings for um, casting some sort of spell, um, but you're not sure what type of spell, so you're not sure, you know, schools of magic, if it's even you know, clerical. Well, or... offers the scroll to Ina. Oh, I know magic. Mm, my my powers don't really work this way. Uh, do yours? I think so. Do they, Mister Sword? And doesn't sixteen Arcana tell her? So, um, what she's able to really make out of it is. Um, the spell itself is um, a, it's a spell scroll for augury, but in terms of like you know how to cast it, things like that, it's no, oh, it's it's one of them clericy magics. Maybe I don't know Faith what to can do. Use it. Does she, do you know magic, Faith? Does she? kind of shakes her head um, I was trained with the sword not with the spells I 
Hmm, maybe, maybe we can sell it to the clerics at the church for a little bit of coin. Agreed. Okay. Are we out of here yet, though? Um, yeah, if there's nothing else you want to do in here, yeah, you um, exit the cellars of the villa um, of Sen the uh, Senzar Manor here, and um, you're back into uh, you know the Frost Haven. Ale and rest for Kavash, boy. He's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I need a warm fire. Warm fire, you say, huh? Yeah, I need a warm fire at the end. I got frozen in that damn well. Who Venus was is it? sad and disappointed. She failed faith. Who was it that asked us to bring the family back? We were trying to save the uh, woodcutter and his family. Woodcarver and his family, and we were supposed to find Ignis, and I, I let everybody down. We found the family, though. Who who asked us to? We should go speak to the person that asked us about the family. Well, you know, you heard rumors of what happened to the family. We were not oh, doing okay. this for a reward. We did this oh. because it was the right thing to do. So we were wasting our time. That's right. I remember. And since we couldn't find Ignis, Anna feels like, yeah, we, she let everybody down. Well, I believe that we should do what I suggested in the first place, is search for that spell book. Le Leah seeing, Leah seeing Inna, uh looking down, is going to reach over, and she, she's going to try to be inspirational. The monks have a saying. It is, as long as one tries to do their lessons well, one has not failed until they have given up on learning the skill completely. But I'm not learning a skill. I'm but, trying to impress Faith so I can, she'll say good things about me to the uh, Concordiant. Commonwealth's going to be disappointed in me. Faith saw you valiantly battle. Three nulls. Yeah, you did good, Anna. You fought well. At to, to save people for no reward, who would not be impressed by such valor and selflessness? She just still kind of sits there moping. So I posted just a further reminder that we do have the little quest logs here. Um, so every time you guys find little clues for some of these things, I, I throw them up on here. So this gives you kind of a timeline of when you first heard about it, um, the progress you made on it. Um, I don't have, of course, the conclusion here because you just found them. But um, if you have any addition where you heard things from, you just check these little quest logs here. They're all uh, visible for you guys. That's why I got them up there for you. You're too hard on yourself, Anna. So she's inconsolable right now. So um, the she's a pouting princess. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really do too much on that. Um, let's see. This is not going to look pretty, but I am going to just post what was in that chest in the uh, adventure log here, um, just so you guys can just see everything. Now, the bottles that were in here, the fluids inside of them, because they're, they're clear glass, do look like the same uh, fluids that you've been um, shoving down people's throats to save their lives. So there's uh, two of them in here. And let me just throw this on here. I imagine can't feel, you know, well having glass shoved down your throat. Get rid of that here. Oh. And uh, 
Uh, oh, yeah, the uh, sword here. Okay. All right, so, again, it's in the uh, adventure log uh, handout here. So it's got the uh, coin um, amounts here and the amount of gems and the type of gems you found, um, as well as the uh, number of the uh, potions. All right, so we know Kavach is um, getting some much-needed uh, rest and uh, food um, on, man. At, the, at the local uh, tavern. Um, what else is everybody doing here besides in a, questioning a lot of things? And um, Faith is also kind of emotionally uh, unstable right now. Um, more than twice she has faltered in combat that uh, almost cost her her life. Um, once at the caverns and once at the bowels of this uh, manor uh, last session. And she's seen a lot of strange stuff going on here, and she's also failed to find um, Flame Shroud, who apparently is seems to be communicating with some person called the Ebon Spider, um, who doesn't sound like a very very notable person so she's quite frustrating frustrated and questioning a lot of things as well um, so yeah she's probably um, gonna be drinking up as well at the end just after bandaging her wounds of course um, yeah hang out of faith Okay. Um, uh, Grenelford is gonna um, hang out with uh, at the at the temple and see if he can get any any more information on that spell book that they want him to find. Okay, so <clears throat> the uh, spell book offer his mm. services as a mm. as a scholar and a, mm. and a healer. So this was the thing on the spell book here. And this is what Sister Abigail has told you, has told um, Spart, and has told Tyrion, who sadly couldn't make it here today. So they're, we're going to find out what they're doing uh, in the meantime during all this. Um, I know part of what Spart's doing, but not everything. Leah is going to visit the smithy while all of this is going on. Okay. So we need to find a jeweled silver comb. No, she's given you that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um. She's went out there herself, and the spirit was, you know, either afraid of her or just for whatever reason would not reveal itself. So she's asking you to go and offer that uh, to the spirit. In exchange for knowledge about that spell book belonging to Ergo the Magnificent, does does she give Grentelford the uh, the location of? Uh, yeah. Um, so, the location of it is a small cottage, um, not far from this ruined town of uh, Thornberry, uh, up in the north. How far away is it? It's a few days here. Let me um, I'll mark it on the map here. And I'll show you guys here. Oh, wrong screen. And it's loading. If it would let me change submenus. Here we go. Hmm. 
it's not showing the name on it. I'll bring you guys over to map here in a second. So you guys should be loading on the new map any moment. There we go. The Spirit's Cottage, I see it. Yeah, and you should also that see... That is a long ways off. Yeah. And you see the uh, town of Thornberry as well. All right. Um... It's a little bit of, a little bit of travel there. So our Grundle Fair is going to spend some time and see if there's any kind of um, merchant bands heading towards Th heading for Thornberry that might need an escort. Well, Thornberry's um, kind of a little ruined uh, town. Um, it's part of the reason why they wanted to get rid of the Knolls. Kind of reason Cut on. to what? This is the reason why they wanted to get rid of the Knolls. Thornberry's in ruins. Oh, okay. I just um, marked so her there because she mentioned be... Thornberry with that, so you have the marker on the map. Thornberry would not <clears throat> would not be inhabited then. Um, so Grentelfurt is going to try and find a rentable horse and carrot, uh, a couple horses and a and a cart for us to for us to travel in. Yeah, during this downtime, though, Ina's going to do what she said she's going to do, and first go get someone to detect magic to see if any of these things we picked up over the course are magical, and then either get them identified or sold off. Okay, and let's see. Well. See if we have anybody here that can do that. Just checking the NPCs here. The ones that you met anyway. I'm sure. Wouldn't the Golden Lions have something? What a lion? The uh, Lions Den. Um, that would be the quote unquote um, smithy um, that Leah's going for. They're the ones that can deal with uh, weapons and such. Speaking of, what uh, what did you want to go out to them for, Leah? Uh, it's in the chat. Uh, she wants to purchase three uh, comma, uh, three kunai you know, daggers and uh, two comma or hand axes. Okay. <clears throat> do apologize i wasn't in the uh, chat screen for all this as you can tell i'm no. jumping three maps and stuff That's so i do apologize no um okay now while they don't have the, the kunai they can modify some things and kind of make to what you're used to for that so for like the, okay. the comma and the basically showing them like hey this is what i want to to have done here um mm -hmm. let me get the pricing on this Oh yeah, that's gonna be. 
So the um, the kunai, you wanted three of those. Um, yep. They're only going to charge you three gold for that, even with the custom modifications to make those. Um, okay. And for the um, for the commas there, you wanted two. So that's going to be five gold for both. So okay. for everything there, eight gold. That is perfectly acceptable. Kivash would like to buy a healing kit after he sobers up. <laughs> All, right. All right. That leaves me with 86 gold. How much should I deduct to get completely soused at the end, Dave? Well, that, that's up to you. I'll, I'll give you the prices on that in just one moment. Let me get you that healing kit. Uh, yeah, so the healing kit is just going to be five gold uh, for that. And as for the inn, which I actually do have the prices for that uh, listed here. I don't know why I didn't put the weapons and such on no, here. He's going to get, like, totally hammered for the first time in celebration <laughs> of survival. All right. So it's pretty standard uh, food and drink um, costs here at the um, Hearthstone Inn. So, um, so it's going to be about, well, let's see. He'll buy a gallon of ale. I was going to ask if you're going to get uh, ale, wine. Gallon of ale. Ale? <laughs> Gallon? Yep. <laughs> okay. So, Kavash is basically ordering, you know, like Thunderbird. Uh, <laughs> so, it's going to be uh, two silver just for the gallon. And uh, make a uh, constitution check. Um, awesome. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you're uh, going out today. Con saving throw. Here we go. All right, so, yeah, you drink the, the gallon, and, um, you know, you start to feel a little buzz, but otherwise, you know, you still feel fine. You still feel like you can function. I need stronger stuff next time. That's cool. Uh, let's see here. I roll Faiths as well, because she's drinking. He burps loudly. <laughs> So, this little 13-year-old boy and this armored um, tiefling woman, they're drinking at the tavern, and um, this looks like, if anybody's watching the scene here, um, after drinking, you know, the gallon of ale, and she's just drinking mug after mug of uh, ale. Um, I drink her under the table. Basically, yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Yeah, she she got an eight on her constitution. <laughs> so yeah, she she didn't quite uh quite make that. So did she drink the L too? So uh, I bought L for us. That that'll work. So yeah, so it was like she you bought the 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 ale. She bought like the little food stuff. You know, like the little cheese and bread and stuff you know to bring cool um and she just like passes out uh on the cheese plate um her head just like laying right on it <laughs> you like lift her head up and there's like yep. a little piece lift of cheese stuck to it get some cheese <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome Please. all right so um and you're trying to get the um trying to find somebody to identify right well, detect detect magic to see if any of them are magical because that's uh, a lot of identifying the, the, down. the potions and the sword is gleaming magic. Alrighty. Well, I guess we'll get that sword identified. Let's see. Yeah, that's... I think that's where I was here. Let's see if this NPC would have this spell. Nope. All right. So, yeah, the only spellcaster that you're finding here is pretty much um, a priest, and um, that's 
that's really it. There's not really a lot of heavy magic use here, believe it or not. Um, it's part of the reason why um, the Crimson Masks are able to kind of take over your town so quickly and with such force and ferocity. Hey, Dave, how much does studded leather armor cost? Uh, go to Baldrick Sundays or whatever his name is. Um, yeah, you can Baldrick's. go there. Um, you'll get a slightly cheaper price from the Lion's Den because um, really you're in good scary. favor with them because you return their goods. And well, they're the ones that really are dealing with weapons and armor. Um, they stopped Ooh. production with that because of the Crimson Mass. They didn't want um, to basically have to be forced to make them arms and armor. So they kind of hid that service away. So it wasn't until you guys arrived and turned and said, hey, look. We can make you arm, you know, armor and weapons and such. Um, we just, you know, keep it down low because we don't want the crimson masks to know. Awesome. Well, he'll go there slightly inebriated and be like, <laughs> "Hey, <laughs> hello." So can I have some. I want some set of other armor, please. So you, time to upgrade. So they're only going to charge you um, twenty-two gold uh, for the armor. Is it nice? You know, he's got, like, half-closed eyelids and stuff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they um, they don't have it with there. they got to make that. Um, so you'll have that can in the next... Can you make this does, like, shiny? <laughs> yeah. And they just kind of... Yeah, yeah, we, we can we can make it uh, shiny for you. Ah, right, thanks. Dark leather and shiny studs. Actually, what am I thinking? Make them dull. Make them mad. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to have a bedazzled <laughs> studded leather armor. I'm sorry I drink too much today. My bad. No, make them matte finish studs and dark leather, please. And they kind of scratch out what they're um, writing on this little parchment here with the ink. And, and you said deduct 22 gold? Yeah, 22 gold for that. Um done that's really all i but that's going to take a while to be done right yeah it's going to be done during the the downtime when we do uh, some downtime with that oh, okay so make a note uh, yeah, that's what i'm doing right here i'm trying to pull up the adventure uh, log here okay and that was all i could think that he would want to do i mean really he, he he's already expanded his weapon arsenal off the fallen enemies Oh so, no, man! I'm I'm smoking crack. Then he gets the idea of is there a pet store around? He, he wants poisonous vipers. I I, I forgot. <laughs> but he's half drunk, so he don't know. But yeah, so he he remembers, you know. Yeah, he's stumbling through the streets. In that flash of drunken brilliance. Yeah, he in that flash of drunken brilliance, he's like, oh yeah, I want I want poisonous snakes. So <laughs> he's some snakes. and he says that out loud. <laughs> He gets all excited and says that out loud, you know. As Where can I get some down. snakes? Where can I get some snakes? Exactly. You see, you already got it in your head, man. That's exactly yeah. what he's doing. <laughs> That's little kids exactly looking around doing. for snakes. So he's he's gonna look around for some poisonous vipers that he can uh, have as pets, so he can get their venom and kill his darts with. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> okay. So yeah, he's uh, out on his quest for snakes. Um, let's see, yeah, Inna's not, um, yeah, it's not finding the yeah, right spellcasters here. Um, let's see. Though, yeah, there's roll an investigation. Town. I want to see if you pick up on something else here. Go investigation. 18. Go, go investigation. Really <laughs> yeah, actually, that is. Uh, let's see. So, on your quest to kind of find such a spellcaster, um, you, while there's nobody in uh, Frosthaven with that, um, you do pick up that some other rumors um, going on about um, 
other disturbances here that could be from um, a spellcaster here. So basically there's some ruins that the people around Frost have been hearing rumors that, um, and these are mostly from prospectors, that have reported being kind of chased away um, by the area by uh, undead, lots of undead. Um, they just kind of sprung up uh, recently with that, and it's very unusual um, with this. So, some of the, you know, people there's like, hey, if you're, you know, looking for weird stuff like that, um, you can go check out that area. If you can, you know, clear it out for us, that'd be great. Um, She'll nod politely. Remember all the undead, horrifying things she's seen, and just kind of keep nodding. And uh, the only thing that you can really get from the prospectors about that area, you know, because um, there's mountains. It's close to the Giants by Mountains where they're trying to make another mine to dig out. Um, they know that the ruins there kind of sit um, by this old kind of watchtower that was part of, or rumored to be part of, some ancient magical empire. Um, and a lot of the people are kind of worried that there may be some kind of dangerous magic afoot, uh, some dormant uh, arcane energies that may be um, permeating uh, through the area that's causing all these undead to just start marching about. Ooh. Well, she'll keep that in mind as she continues onward. <laughs> Because right now she she's had uh, she's had enough undead for one day. Brent from Bird is still putting everything together for the um, for for the expedition out to the spirits' home. He wants to be able to um, he wants to be able to, to lay out everything already set up and ready for them to leave whenever they choose to do so. Yep. Okay. And if right. I can't find anyone to uh, identify, I'll just go on ahead and start um, trying to sell off the other goods that are not the ring. He's keeping the ring. She likes it. Back. Uh, welcome back. Did I find some vipers? No, you have not found any viper shit. You did find a squirrel. Now the um not poison though. <laughs> so let me also get this here. Oh no. Um, yeah, so the uh that ruined watchtower is also in the vicinity of Thornberry. <laughs> And that's near where that spirit's cottage was. So just so you can see what I'm talking about here. The ruined watchtower, is that new since you put it on earlier? Yeah, I just add that on here. That's what um, Inna um, found out about. That's where there's undead that's scaring away people here. So, just so you know. So, um, with with everything that you've done here, um, right after, um, you know, saving, uh, you know, those family members there, um, starting to stock up, um, some people getting more weapons, um, some people buying more supplies, some people getting drunk. Um, you do have a few, you know, interesting side little leads here that uh, you can investigate. Um, and you still have some other um, quests here that you can also uh, try to investigate as well. Um, what's next for our group here? What's next for you guys? Well, if Brentleford has anything to say about it, it's a it's a trip to the Spirit's Cottage near Thornberry, and okay. then Thornberry. 
But if we go there, aren't we pretty much abandoning the other quests here? Not necessarily. Um, there's still some things that are linked there, you know, like uh, finding Flame Shroud, um, you know, finding Hybor. But beyond that, you know, you're not really abandoning uh, these quests. So in time, there are things that are kind of, they do have kind of a time limit to do because they're time sensitive. You know, being like somebody could be dying, things like that. But this is not the case for these. And if you make certain choices that contradict these, yes, you can close out some quests. Um, oh. But again, that's not the case for the current ones right here. Before we go on, where are these knolls that uh, are supposed to be along the Starlight Path, Starlight Trail? Is that just up and down this trail in general? Um, no. Um, so they were going to the, what they call the, the Wyvern Cliffs, which um, that area is basically um, over here. Okay. So, basically, this whole trail here um, on the side was being attacked by gnolls. Thornberry was where um, a lot of that was concentrated. That's why Thornberry is no longer there. And since the fall of Thornberry, anybody who's really come this area traveling the roads here, any kind of merchants, have been accosted by these gnolls. Then, yeah, I, uh, Leah would throw in with Grenelfort. It's in the same direction as those gnolls, and those are endangering people. We can hit them on the way back. But the Spirit's Cottage, I I owe the clerics here for my resurrection, and I'll bet Thornberry is a good place to, to find some knowledge. Who knows, if we can clear it out, people may be able to um, settle there. Ina would agree with the sentiment, although she she would ask we take a short uh, few days of rest before we go charging back out again. Well, at least one day. Let's see here. Okay, so it seems like you guys are going to be going... Uh, there and then just checking one little thing for you guys. Okay, uh, not that one. All right, perfect. All right, so um, with that, you got kind of um, you know purpose um, heading out that way and a few sites to uh, tackle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna stop here. Um, we'll have a little some. Uh, downtime uh, after this while you get your, you know, gear give you a chance to do some other things and prep for the journey to come because that is a long trek along the Starlight Trail. Yeah, Grenelford is going to be trying to get it together um, a cart and horses they can use and um, yeah. food for both us and the horses and maybe um, a tent or two a big tent or two Uh on the serious though, Dave, how mm -hmm. how much would it cost or whatever to have some poisonous snakes for real? Um, well, right now it's not a question of price. Right now it's a question of locating. Okay. That that's the biggest challenge because that's not something that's very common, and is kind of suspicious as well. <laughs> Just trying to find that because. You know, snakes alone is an odd request, but poisonous is specific as well as odd. Yeah, I mean, there's only one reason anyone would want poisonous snakes um, in the medieval times, and people know what that means, and it's never good. They're like, wow, this 13-year-old kid wants to kill people. <laughs> well, I mean, your character openly admits that publicly oh, yeah. anyway. He does. So yeah. well, right now, the, like the the thing that's letting it slide is because when he was asking before, just kind of stumbling around town, being drunk. Oh yeah. So people are just writing off as just some drunk yeah. kid, just babbling, you know. So they they weren't really paying much mind to it, but 
Um, if he's sober and starts going to merchant after merchant or really pressing hard and crying, hey, where can I get some venomous snakes at? That's going to raise some eyebrows. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, that, that's when you're just like, yo, where can I poison a bitch at? I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I, mean, I know, dude. I know. It's just funny, though. It is. I was doing that for a comic group. He's not going to, like, go look at a pet store for freaking vipers. I was doing that for the comedy of being half drunk, stumbling I mean, around, talking about snakes. If your character is looking for, like, poison, right? There's, oh, yeah. You could go for hemlock. Nah, nah. We need inject. I, he wants injected poison to coat his darts with, man. The more potent, the better. So, in reality, he's probably going to end up having to... Uh, He's gonna fire green air, uh, green dragons from his darts. Uh, no, <laughs> realistically, he can't do that. It'd be nice though, but he can't. I mean, you could tie a dart to a dragon and just like nudge the dragon in the direction of your target. True. How about finding a baby wyvern egg and then raising it and then coating his darts with the wyvern stinger venom? That'd be awesome. That could be. Possibility, definitely. Plus, it'd be a nice mount, so it would be attacking with poison, and so would he, and it would, he'd be flying around on it. That'd be pretty kind of gnarly. Right. Yeah, he's a crazy kid. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. All right, yeah. Um, yeah, so we got pretty much um, what everybody idea where you guys want to go, and um, we'll just do the downtime uh, stuff in between and recap on everything with that. Um, so yeah, hope you guys had uh, fun watching everything, and hope you guys had fun playing it especially. So um, it was fun, Dave. With that, uh, we'll uh, see everybody next time. Have fun. <laughs>